cool, cool. Well, thank you, man. I, I first, I wanted to say uh, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to talk to you, man. Um, I, I had uh, I, I seen you a long time ago, a few years ago. I was working with my friend. Uh, uh, I'm a, I'm an uh, electrical engineer, and he was like. He's like, what are you watching? I'm like, it's Eric Dubay, man. I'm watching Eric. I said, I'm going to talk to him one day. I'm going to do everything I can. He's like, no, you're not, man. Just stop. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, yeah, we made awesome, that happen. So thank you. I, I appreciate the uh, opportunity, man. Right on. No, I, I didn't even have any idea, you know, you'd sent that out into the universe. Uh, me, myself, oh, yeah. I kind of had the same idea ever since I'd seen your channel and we'd interacted a bit. I thought, you know, this oh, guy's yeah. Yeah. on my wavelength, you know, it'd be cool to talk oh, to definitely. him sometime. So, definitely, yeah. man, definitely. It, it was weird because when I first, uh, I was trying to find you and I think it was when YouTube was, they were taking you down and uh, it was when Eddie Bravo, he's like, look, man, just look up Eric. If you, if you don't understand what's going on, just look up Eric Dubay. And I kept typing it in. I'm like, I can't find him i'm like i'm looking for him and it was right when i think it might have been your third <laughs> that they took down and uh i was like i can't and it brought me up to you know a couple of those other clowns and they were trying to go through your book and i was like okay let me what, what is this guy talking about and he's going through and he's you know you're naming some of the proofs in your book and he's like now does that sound right and then he just goes to the next proof. I'm like, he's not even debunking it. He's not even answering it, you know. And I was like, I was like, this isn't Eric, you know. So I was looking for you for the longest time. Then I started Googling. And then I actually found some of your other links and stuff. But I guess that's the first thing people do is they go to, like, YouTube for, uh, you know, pretty much everything. And if, it's, if you're not there right away, it's like, you know, all of a sudden, you know, it's like, Oh, I can't find him. I guess he doesn't exist anymore or something, you know? <laughs> I, I wonder about that but, because uh, it was right after uh, I got that big plug from Eddie Bravo that I think you're right. It was the third time I got banned from YouTube was shortly after that. And I thought the same thing. It was, uh, you know, coincidental timing that I was probably just about to get a spike in traffic and then they shut me down then. Uh, and you're right. People go to yeah. YouTube, they search Eric Dubay. And if you don't have a channel with your content there, then all the first yeah. stuff that comes up is debunking Dubay and, you know, right. anti-flat earth propaganda from the big channels because yeah. of the way the YouTube algorithm works. It promotes what they consider to be official channels first. So channels that yeah. are, um, you know, you know, tote the party line, blue, che blue check mark, so to speak, and haven't been, uh, you know, flagged yeah. for, for talking about, you know, subjects like we do, I'm sure. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I actually I'm getting messages uh, from from YouTube now where they're like, we removed your content. And I'm looking at the date and I'm like, this was a year ago. And uh, they, they've just just this past couple weeks, they've been in there pulling this, pulling that down. I'm like, OK, this is this is stuff I released a year ago. And now they're just nagging and picking and, and everything. And, uh, you know, that that was my issue. There was a, a few, you know, some of the guys that I'd, I've been they're just learning from in general. I, I, I don't know if they know how censored that you are online. I think I did a video, uh, might have been a few, maybe a couple, maybe a year. I think it was a year, um, a year back. And I was typing your name in on live to show some of the uh, guys on my channel that it wasn't bringing you up unless I was subscribed directly to you. But mm -hmm. you actually have to like go into your channel and and find it because it's it's like they're trying to hide you as much as they can. It's really difficult, even though you know it, it should be a lot easier. But once everyone is like subscribed to you, your channel comes up really quickly. But if you kind of search it without the subscription, it's really hard to find at first. You really got to scroll through and see if you can, you know. And all that shadow banning crap is is completely outrageous, you know. And it's it's uh, so you know it winds me up anytime people are like, oh. Eric Dubay still online. I'm like Eric Dubay's made so many different channels and stuff, and and it's like other people. It's like you know they. I guess they're not looking or paying enough attention or something, you know, uh, exactly. which is common. It's like you damned know, if but, you do, damned if you don't. If I'm not yeah. online, nobody's ever gonna find me. And when I am online, yeah. they're like, if this guy's information was true, he'd be banned by now. It's like, 
Right. I have over yeah. and over and over again. And just the fact that I keep coming back and they're like, hey, he's back. That must mean he's not genuine. <laughs> so, oh, so to right, be genuine, right, I just right. have to throw yeah. my hands up, be banned, be canceled, <laughs> and just be like, oh, I tried. Okay. Ooh, <laughs> not, not, that's that's what a hero is nowadays. <laughs> like, oh, that's good. Act, that's how good activism is. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And oh, uh, yeah, you're talking about man. you can only find me if you're subscribed. Another thing is if you can stay subscribed. I get people yeah. like dozens a day telling me I've been unsubscribed for the fourth yeah. time, the fifth time. They just get unsubscribed yep. from my channel randomly. And then when they think that I haven't posted a video for a long time, they check back and they're like, Eric's still here. Oh, he's posted like four videos. I'm unsubscribed. Right. What? So mm -hmm. yeah, they got a bunch of these underhanded tactics. They remove likes. They have removed views. Uh, they've removed so many views that uh, I, I had a video go into the negatives before. <laughs> so, really? Yeah, that was back in like 2018. I have a video showing uh, screenshots of it and everything. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. See, I I knew about that. I was telling some some uh, like a lot of other subscribe well other people I'm subscribed to. I was telling them I was like I'm unsubscribed from you, and I, I every day they kept uh, just unsubscribing me. But also the like thing. That was the first time that it, that happened to me where I would. I'd put a, a thumbs up on it and uh, I'd refresh the page. And the next thing I know is it's, you know, it's, thumbs it's, gone. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I mean, all of those tactics should kind of set alarm bells off in people's heads, but I, I've seen, I, I think it is for the, for the most they part. They remove comments all the time. Right, yeah. right. The comments, yeah, yeah. I, I found out on mine. Um, yeah. A lot of people, people got angry just on my, on my channel, and my channel's not that big at all. And they're just they're removing people on there. Like, why do you keep deleting my comments? I'm like, I'm not deleting your comments, man. I'm like, you you, you should know by now what's what's happening here. But it's right. like I said, it's the most popular, and I almost think it's the interface for YouTube as well, where it's a really easy to use interface. And uh, everything is kind of right there for you. And I noticed some of the other networks, uh, like BitChute and other, the interface really isn't as good, you know. Yeah. And if, if they would put more money, I guess, into the interface, I think, you know, user experience, um, that would right. probably help a lot of people. But after using something for so long, everybody's just used to going to YouTube. But it's right. a cesspool on there, man. I, I'm kind of I'm backing up all my stuff just on uh, other networks now. And I just have it all going there because, mm -hmm. you know, I can't even really go live that much without getting another strike all of a mm -hmm. sudden for saying right. something. You know, yeah, they're even going to... back to stuff I did a year ago. So <laughs> right. they they um, they go back. They, they'll make new rules and then they'll go back right through your catalog. And if your old videos don't cater to their new rules, then you'll get strikes or at least get them taken down. Yeah. 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 Yeah, hundred percent. It's it's almost no way to win, you know. And really, a lot of it is discrimination. And I was telling people that on on my network because uh, I'm I'm kind of like uh, on the D.C. area in America and stuff. And uh, it's there's a lot of at will states here where people can fire you at, at will for things. And I was really telling people like, it's fine if if somebody wants to fire you or kick you off of a network but when they're singling you out or discriminating against you that's actually a violation right. it, you know it's one thing if they say hey i'm gonna do this to you that's that's one thing but whenever it's like i'm gonna let other people stay here you know and and you're doing the same thing as them but i'm gonna kick you off that's that's literally you know textbook definition you know of what we've seen even the past couple of years it's uh you know the very definition of discrimination and stuff and uh you know they're letting a lot of, a lot of the uh, the 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 fake shills, mil Hollywood shills, millions of subscribers. You know, c come on here and talking about America, and I'm like, some of these guys aren't even in America, and they have no clue. They've never been in America other than just to visit for a second, so they have no idea what they're even talking about. And it's crazy mm -hmm. how you know you get so much clout, you know, for that type of stuff. Those like Hollywood guys, like uh, you know. I'm not even mentioning them, but uh, just, you know, they're 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 around left and right dividers. I've done some exposing videos on them and I've gotten their their fans all angry. So why are you talking mean about my, you know, my guy? I'm like, you never met this guy. I'm like, he's a Hollywood puppet and he's creating division and hatred. You know, it, it's it's so bad here in America that uh, you really can't go around anywhere and tell people that you're either like a Republican or a Democrat if you do. 
they will discriminate against you anywhere. You know, they'll they'll hold you accountable for it for forever until you come to them and say, never mind, I'm the same as you. Does that make you feel better? <laughs> you know, you almost have to play a mind game on them, especially at jobs, um, just to keep from getting discriminated against because of, uh, you know, the campaign with the last president here on the news every day and all this nonsense. It's just kind of polarized this place, mm. you know, but mm -hmm. it's, it, is it, is it kind of like that, like where you are in general? I was interested in asking you about like, uh, you like your area. Is that, is it different there altogether? As they say over here, same, same, but different. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it's, politics i think is pretty much the same all over but with different flavors and they um you know they they always update the rhetoric and uh based on the society and so no i mean it's a lot of the same problems and issues that they're tackling in politics over here that they are over there uh party politics and bipartisan and Mm -hmm. Split, splitting the people here. They even do the colors. It's yellow and red. And, well, I guess over there it's red and blue, right? Yeah, over red here, and blue. Yeah. Over here it's red and yellow. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's outrageous. Very, um, groupthink oriented. I, I find yeah. all all of politics to be like. Uh, you know, a, a soap opera that they pretend is real <laughs> and you get sucked into it and you vote for who you want to be on the next season. And it was like it was yeah. like the, ba the Bachelor, those kind of reality yeah. shows before before reality shows. The political sphere was was that for people. And it really is like a popularity contest similar to Hollywood, like you're saying. It's like these people gain so much credibility out of nowhere. Yeah. It's like, why? Mm -hmm. Just because you see their face all the time, basically? It's like if your face is right. plastered on TV enough or on enough right. billboards, that somewhere in the reptile brain or something, it <laughs> triggers something where we're like, yeah, yeah, this guy's. I like this guy. He's my guy. I see him all the yeah. time. He's my buddy. <laughs> like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I noticed that uh, with, you know, the whole... Trump thing and uh, and wrestling, you know, WWE thing when he was going out there like uh, my, my dad was like heavy into uh, WWE. So as I was growing up over the years, I, I, I haven't seen it since uh, like Hollywood Hogan and and all of them. So I'm from like the 90s era mm. of, of that. And, uh, you know, but my dad, he kind of. You know, and when when, you know, the president went on there, he was doing all this stuff, you know, and everybody kind of liked him back then as, as some kind of rebel. And it was so weird just to see it, you know. But, you know, and recently I looked over just some of the clips from some of these <laughs> past presidents. And I'm yeah. like, were these guys this like, were they really this big of clowns? You know, because <laughs> when I was younger, uh, I, I didn't pay much attention when I was like 11 and. 10 and i had no idea that there was that much i mean it was it was a full-on comedy show you know mm -hmm. even you know from uh you know bush all the way up it was just comedy shows of just nonsense and i'm like i must have missed all this you know the only thing that i seen uh, that i really paid attention to when i was younger was uh some guy throwing his shoe at at bush while he's having his speech up there on the boat and i'm like Dude, this is a clown shit <laughs> he was dodging it <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, most of his stuff was worse than that. And I'm like, man, how did people even come close to taking this guy serious? And I, I think then there was people who knew then, you know, and uh, like you mentioned, even uh, David and, and them, they, they knew then the clown show that was happening. It's weird after you, you wake up and you learn the reality of the world. It's like I used to be part of that type of system, you know, mm -hmm. but I was never married to it. I never like held it in high esteem, you know, if, uh, if it crumbled, it crumbled, you know, it was kind of the thing with flat earth. It was like, you know, I, I heard a lot of people just say, Hey, they're lying. Hey, these pictures are fake, but I didn't know NASA actually admitted that they're fake. I'm like, okay, this is, this is a little bit different now. It's like, you know, and then all of a sudden you start realizing that you're the one defending them. They're telling you the truth themselves. They're not even defending themselves. They're like, Oh yeah, yeah, they're fake. Yeah. They're this, they're that. And, uh, you know, and the other people are the ones like, no, no, what do you, you don't believe in the moon missions and all this nonsense. And, uh, mm -hmm. so I kind of watch that for comedy. Now I've been watching a whole bunch of space movies and stuff and people going back in time because they circle a planet for a second. And now they're, young, they're, old, <laughs> they're younger than their kids. <laughs> like, uh, like, Superman God. saved the world that way in the, in that movie, right. Or saved Lois Lane uh, yeah, going back yeah. in time, spinning the world backwards. <laughs> yeah. You change time. By... <laughs> That's insane. I, and I realized they were teaching that in my school. So I got really angry because 
I could never figure it out. I was like, okay, so what you're saying is we're looking in the past when we look up there. I'm like, so how, how do we make this relative to, uh, yeah, I'm up here trying to like write it down on paper and I'm angry with my teachers. Like this, I mean, am I too stupid to to learn this? And, and then I realized what it really is. It's, it's meant to make you feel like you're just completely stupid. Like, yeah, you can't, you can never grasp the vastness of the space time continual you know, and it, it's like, this is a concept. This is just, you know, a thought experiment at, at in the end of all of it. It's just a, you know, this is what I think, you know what I mean? And right. I mean, it was a, it was an eye opening theme. And I think I was making one of my friends mad when I was like learning all this. Cause I was talking to him and he's like, man, if you talk about Eric one more time, I'm like, no, you need to see this. <laughs> and, uh, and he's just like, look, man, look, look, you you got to stop going down these rabbit holes. I'm like, it's not, dude. This is this is serious. You got to pay attention to it. And I think I actually, uh, you know, I, I got to him, and I, I'm happy I did because throughout the uh, the lockdowns and stuff that they were doing here, um, it, it was really weird because he was calling me and he was asking me, "Hey, what's going on with this?" And he kept just stuff that's uncharacteristically, you know, just completely out of his norm. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Is this?" what's going on here? What's going on with the queen? What's going on there? I'm like, you're asking me all these, these questions. And before that, he wasn't interested in any of it. He was Mm -hmm. hooked on to the politics. And after I sat with him for a few months before he had left, um, you know, he just started asking me everything now. Now he's, you know, so he was really careful about what he did. Um, you know, but I don't know how it turned out for him in general in the, uh, you know, during the shutdowns, I think he was kind of scared that he was going to lose his job. And he was talking about people are forcing him to do different things. And I'm like, look, dude, nobody's going to force you. I'm like, in the end, it's it's you. It's like you've been told and it's up to you if you're going to do this, you know. And uh, he got mad with me, of course, as everybody mm-hmm. does, you know. So, you know, no, they forced me. So they're gonna lo- I'm like, then lose your job. I was like, I have lawyers that I can I can connect you with. I, I, t- I offered them to pay, you know, and come to find out some people actually uh, decided to be laid off. And they were paid for being laid off. And then they mm. came back to their job. So he's calling me and he's pissed. He's like, dude, they didn't even fire him. They just laid him off. So he didn't have to do anything. And then he came back to the job and he paid him too. He's like, what am I doing here? I was like, I told you not to just say no. Mm. You know, no is like the strongest word, you know. But right. uh, I don't know how it turned out for him after that. But I think he learned to say no more <laughs> after all that. So, right. you know, I'm happy I kind of rubbed off on him a little bit. <laughs> you know, I don't know if he's into the flat earth yet. I don't, I, I've tried to get him there, but he knows some weird stuff going on, especially with Shatner and the rest of them, you know, 90 years old going up. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, he, he didn't buy it for a minute. He used to get really angry with me. Uh, say Elon was like a genius. And I was just like, uh, nah, <laughs> nah, not at all. <laughs> not, not at all, man. <laughs> But Eric, I wanted to ask you, uh, I know I'm talking so much, man. I, I, I'm like, okay, dude, I got so much to talk to Eric about. I wanted to ask you, I had a couple questions. Um, you, you've done videos on some of this, but I, I did have a couple flat earth questions, but I really wanted to talk about some other things because you have like an extensive library of information out there, especially on a lot of the truth topics and the political truth topics. Uh, and most of it's there. So it's kind of like if I ask you those questions, it's like you could just put your videos on play and we not even do the interview. So I just wanted to ask, like, uh, if, if you want to, like, move to a different country. I know this is worldwide right now, but for anybody that is interested in moving, like leaving the country, if they feel like they want to, um, you know, I know, like, real quick, just to explain what I mean. Everything is changing. So as you know, so. If they lock, say, lock someone down here, that's going to be at your doorstep really quickly. So it's like when one thing starts getting like implemented somewhere, you know, around it's going to spread. You know what I mean? Mm. Almost like, you know, communism. So it's Mm. it's like. There's nowhere to run from it, so I don't mean in the sense of running like people need to actually make a difference themselves and Mm. and stop waiting for uh, somebody to come in and save them. But um, if if you want to move to a different place, what would be one of the main things like like you, for instance, what were you looking for when you wanted to move? Just mm. like key points, anything off the top? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, for me, when I moved to Thailand or got originally interested in it was because I had a Thai best friend from childhood 
and I came here on vacation with him for a month and loved it and decided I wanted to move here and teach English after I graduated college. And so that's what I did. And I really love the culture, the food, the weather, the people, the pace of life and the cost of living over here. Um, and, you know, so I, I moved over here and I've really enjoyed life in Southeast Asia uh, more so than America. And I don't have much experience anywhere else to recommend or to say. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say certainly Southeast Asia, if people are interested in trying somewhere new, um, Vietnam, uh, Laos, Cambodia, Malaysia, Thailand, this whole area is interesting and different. The Philippines, Indonesia, it would depend on what you're looking for specifically. and You'd want to do your research. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, they're beautiful. The nature here is beautiful. You know, the weather's nice. Uh, if you're a vegan, this is the place to be. Like, I, I think the tropics are, the, you know, living outside of the tropics is very difficult for humans. Every um, species lives in its desired habitat, and humans seem to be like, you know, we're we're so capable and complex that we can live, we can live anywhere. But mm -hmm. are we, are we? you know, designed <laughs> to be like Eskimos <laughs> to live that way, or are we more designed to live in equatorial regions? Yeah. Having lived, you know, I came from Maine, so having lived pretty far north <laughs> and now living quite near the equator, I absolutely prefer life and here and feel like it just makes sense that, uh, you know, we were meant to live in this kind of climate, unless you're like Wim Hof or <clears throat> or an Eskimo <laughs> or something, you know, but just yeah. uh, the type of person that really appreciates cold weather and that, and that certainly, you know, there's um, beauty to winter and everything. Um, but myself growing up in Maine, I would experience like a winter depression every year. It's, it's like five months of snow on the ground every year there. And um, I didn't really like it so much. The, the weather there really got to me. And here it's, you know, hot and sunny, Pretty much every day, there there really is. They, they say there's three seasons in Thailand, which are officially the hot season, the cold season, and the rain season. But Thais say unofficially that it's uh, hot, hotter, and hottest <laughs> are the three <laughs> Thai seasons. Um, and it really, the hot season does last quite a while. The rain season is just a little, a little. It's like monsoon, torrential downpours for an hour, and then <laughs> and then nothing. The rain here is very different than back home where it's like um, it might rain all day if it's going to rain. Here you, you'd have no idea it's going to rain. It'll downpour for 15 minutes and then <laughs> it won't rain again for a week. Yeah. Okay. But um, yes. um, yeah, I, I, it depends. I, I've heard good things about, you know, Europe, places in Europe and South America and other places, but I just haven't traveled there. Um, but I do think that if you're an American that doesn't have a passport yet and has never traveled abroad to see what some other countries have to offer. I mean, absolutely. Uh, traveling abroad is, you know, it expands your horizons as with learning another language. They kind of go together. Um, if you're, if you only know your own language and you've only ever lived in your own country, you're limited in your, in the ways that you think, I would say. It's like, um, when once you've seen how other people live or uh, have a whole nother language set to operate under, it gives you like a space between your experience and yourself. It's like you can be a witness instead of just being like totally inculcated into your culture and your own way of thinking and your own language. Um, you're able to step aside and, and start comparing and contrasting things and then through that process, I think you're able to individuate yourself more so than people that haven't yet done that. Because so you can see like some inherent uh, processes in your culture that maybe had been operating subconsciously within your mind. But then once you step out of your own culture for a while, um, you know, it becomes you know clear. And even just learning another language, even if you haven't gone to another culture, learning a, a whole new language that 
uh, allows that kind of distance between yourself and your thinking, uh, becoming the witness. And that process is actually like a yogic um, process, like uh, in meditation that they talk about becoming the witness and making a space between your thoughts and your consciousness. Because a lot of people just, they like run on NPC mode where it's like anything they think, it's like, this is me, I am my thoughts, I am my emotions, and they're just going along with, with that, rather than understanding that you are actually this silent witness behind the thoughts, behind the emotions, and if you can stay in that space of just witnessing and not being pulled into all the thoughts and the experiences and the sensations and the feelings, and always remain rooted in the fact that, no, I'm just witnessing all these things. Oh, there's an emotion. Oh, there's a new thought. Oh, there's a new sensation, uh, you know, an audio sensation, a visual sensation. And rather than getting hypnotized and entranced in everything, you remain the witness, which is what meditation and yoga and a lot of ancient spiritual practices are trying to get us to do. Even just going to another country or just learning another language, a lot of things like that, create that separation in your brain and allow you to individuate and become like more yourself. I think of this great line in that movie, I Heart Huckabees. I don't know if <clears throat> you've heard of that one or. Uh, yeah, I've heard it. Cool. It's, it's a really interesting philosophical movie. And they have this line and he tells them to um, think, how am I not myself? And then as he's going through his life and, and interacting with different people, and he happens to be a particularly narcissistic and people-pleasing individual, and so as he's trying to be more genuine, he's, he's repeating in his head, like, how am I not myself? 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 <laughs> and then in all these different situations, he's seeing how he's not being authentic to who he truly is, and his autopilot mode that he's been living his whole life really isn't himself. And he's always thought he was himself, just like we all think we're ourself. When are we not myself? How could I not be myself? But until you go through some of these spiritual processes of individuating yourself, you may subconsciously not be being yourself. <laughs> and it's a great question um, to ask yourself in situations like that movie suggests. Um, when, especially in like social situations, like how am I being inauthentic? How am I not being myself right now? Or when you're making certain decisions, maybe you're being influenced by certain pressures that aren't truly how you would want to decide. And so maybe you're not being yourself then. And so it's a great question to come back to over and over again that will bring you more into being your true self. And, and I think any anything we can do to individuate ourselves and be more ourselves every day it brings us a level of contentment which is i was going to say happiness i've recently been distinguishing between the two it's like I, yeah i think it was a jordan peterson interview i saw where he was distinguishing between it it's like happiness comes and goes of its own accord it's based on life circumstances so we can't really strive for happiness because you know it's you know fleeting but contentment is something more that we can strive for, you know, a, a level of comfort or coziness in our own being or our own space in our house, those kind of things. Um, I, I guess there's a Danish concept called Huga, H-Y-G-G-E, that kind of speaks to this as well. And um, they're, they're supposedly the happiest people on earth, the happiest country um, when surveyed over and over again. And a lot of them relate it to this concept uh, where they foster contentment and comfort in their daily life more so than trying to strive for happiness. But by doing so, they achieve happiness. <laughs> right, right, right. <clears throat> and and that's that's funny that, that you mentioned that because that that I think that's actually what's happening here, especially here. I'm only speaking mainly for America, but 
there's a lot of that, uh, like a propaganda going around because people have like, they're not, they don't know who they are. So every commercial you see, they're like, find your true self. And everybody's now changing themselves from being this to that. Now, you know, now guys are going in the women's bathroom, women's are going in the guys, bathroom, and, and because they have no clue who they actually are, you know, like, like you're saying, it's a, you know, so they're manipulating them and, you know, knowing you know, as far as the the controllers who know that these people are, you know, they don't know who they are. So I'm just going to use that as, uh, you know, to my advantage and mess stuff up, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that's basically what's been going on. But uh, right. that's, that's, uh, they're that's making an excellent us, point. They're making us not know things that are so easy to know to the point yeah. that we can put out an excellent documentary called What is a Woman? <laughs> and the guy goes around for an hour and a half interviewing supposed top experts on gender <laughs> studies <laughs> who cannot answer the simplest question in the world because they've been educated stupid. In yeah. other words, they've been indoctrinated. You know, mm -hmm. it, all education isn't created equal. And if your right. education is, you know, mostly indoctrination and propaganda, then mm -hmm. you're not going to be any smarter than the African tribe that they interview in that movie who absolutely yeah. knows what a woman is, uh, <laughs> is, isn't influenced at all by the gender politics. And when is asked if they would ever like to live or, or travel to America based on what they're learning here, uh, none of them have any interest in leaving the little mud huts. And, yep. <laughs> and they're like, I'm fine right here. And, yeah. um, and, and like what I'm saying, I think a lot of people who have grown up with the idea of America being the greatest country in the world or, or, you know, with the most intelligent people in the world. That may have been at some point in history, maybe you could say that, but in 2023, if people are still hanging on to that, like the rest of the world sure isn't, you know, most of the rest of the world views America as, uh, you know, the most unintelligent people, uh, you know, and um, the freedom that America still clings on to thinking it has, the, the rest of the world doesn't um, you know, agree with that either. So, mm -hmm. you know, not to say, as you're saying, it's not like there's a, a lot more freedom anywhere else. You know, the American constitution, if it were adhered to, is wonderful. You know, it's like the, the closest thing we have to a working minarchy in existence. And if we could have a small government that doesn't over time get larger and larger and larger to the point of America, the failed minarchist experiment that turned into the biggest, most powerful, most forceful government in history um, just goes to show that minarchy, which is the idea of trying to have the smallest government possible, uh, doesn't work, which is why you need full anarchy or voluntarism, where all government power is limited by the, the, vol the, you know, the people truly like democracy claims you know to be for the people but something that was truly for the people would be voluntarism which is what mm -hmm. i've been preaching for you know a decade and plus now uh, and, and which is why i don't fall for any of the political candidates or the political parties because all of them are committing the same um you know problem for me which is that all statist governments are stealing tax money to fund themselves and then they're creating a monopoly of power um, within themselves and the the people who are creating it are above the law the people creating these laws so you've got this privileged group of people that are stealing from everybody else and then able to create laws that they're exempt from and use a monopoly of force to enact you know th th those dictates and you know how is that any different than any other um author authoritarian dictatorial form of government uh it's just you've got this participatory act of voting every four years or whatever of, for these candidates that come out of nowhere most of them from secret societies and things okay. that the public has no knowledge foreknowledge of or after knowledge of for that fact most people don't look into these things and so you, all you get is is that you just get a new face and like you said uh whichever face has the most advertising dollars is usually the one that wins because of our 
reptile brains, whatever it is in humans, it's like if we see a guy on a billboard or on a commercial more than another guy, we think he's our buddy, we, we recognize him, and, uh, you know, I guess he's he's my man, he's he's the one, you know, and, and this whole thing of, like, like, we need someone to represent us in a government, that, that is already the soap opera at play that I'm telling is like, why, why do we need this male centric soap opera for, you know, the, they got the, the, the female centered ones with the romance narratives that they know is fiction on during the daytime. And then in the evening time, when the guys come home, you got the breaking news and then the guys get their soap operas and then they, they, and their, their heroes come on. And, um, but it's really no different. Um, and, uh, yeah, what we really need is uh, volunteerism or just complete anarchy. You know, we we can we can strive towards minarchy. Like overnight anarchy isn't what I'm preaching. Right. But working towards a volunteeristic interaction with the government versus this increasingly um, compulsory mandatory like what happened in 2020 now they're trying to get in my veins mm -hmm. like compulsory like to that degree it's mm -hmm. it's, it's getting ridiculous like i want to go away from yeah. anything mandatory yeah. right like freedom that's the op yeah. that's you know the opposite of <laughs> freedom yeah. is when you're being forced into anything and the biggest uh, vehicle of force in the world today is government and it's getting to a scary degree especially with technology the way they're you know they work together things like um, um, the digital currencies and uh, they're trying to get rid of paper money now that is one of the biggest freedoms that we have right now that they're about to take away I think is paper money yeah. It's yeah. our uh, our ability to have private transactions and to be able to operate on a non-centralized economy, a non-approved economy. And as mm -hmm. the government overreach continues and it becomes more and more difficult to be a stand-up, legitimate citizen within the confines of this ever-narrowing, mm -hmm. you know, legal system. Uh, the, the privacy and freedom afforded to us by things like paper money is, mm -hmm. you know, really something we need to hold on to. We were talking about, you were saying earlier about the saying no. That's one of the big things that we, our power is to boycott things that we really do not want to do and be vocal about it. I just did it again this week. Another restaurant that I used to go to has a big sign out saying cashless we're taking cashless payments only and i was like what and then, and then as i'm we're right in line to go in and she's like will you be paying by credit card or you have a cell phone or digital or whatever and i was like no well we're not going to be you know we're not going to do this and they're like oh well for now you can still pay us cash and we'll change it into digital whatever for you so you can still eat at our restaurant now and i was like no, I'm, I'm not going to eat at the restaurant, but I would appreciate it if you could let your superior know that I am a regular customer. And and the waitress was really nice. And she was like, oh, no, we're, we're losing a regular customer. Mm -hmm. she, she didn't want to lose us. Uh, and, um, and and so I was trying to be really polite, which is what people should do um, to the messenger. Be yeah. as polite as you can, but let them know that you want them to speak on your behalf to their higher up and let them know that you're not going to do business with them anymore if they're going to do this cashless only thing because that is not the way we need the world to go we need it to go the opposite direction towards more freedom you know there should be all options available and we should have crypto available as well we not limit it down to the to how the you can only have digital currencies and we should be able to bargain that would be great to have barter available as well you know we want freedom we want more not less we want decentralization not centralization so anyway I, t I told them you know i don't like the way the world is going and and i don't like how everything is becoming digital like that and it, it limits our freedom and our privacy and this is my power is to not eat at 
this establishment now that you're doing this and so but but I would like to I'd love to come back here um, but you know you, you have to talk to your boss for me and that kind of thing so and and it, I kind of feel good about it in a sense I you, you go in there I feel bad because I can't eat at the restaurant I want to eat at and the world is becoming a way that I don't like and so it creates this bad emotion but then instantly I transform it by vocalizing it and using my power to not sit down and oh we can change the money for you no I'm not going to and here's why and please let your superior know why and then I walk away and I eat somewhere else that I can pay money and I actually sat there feeling like all right I feel okay I mean I feel kind of like Mm -hmm. you know, I went, it went like that. It was like a, a sign yeah. curve. <laughs> I felt bad for a second, but I made myself feel good because I used my power to enact, you know, yeah. the world was going in one direction. And I said, no, I boycotted and used my power. And, you know, it's going to take more than just me at one restaurant, of course. It takes all of us using our power in these ways and spending our money in the, you know, you know, you say yes to the right people to you say no to the places that are going the wrong direction and you say yes to the places that are going the right direction which is usually the grassroots feet on the ground you know try to spend most of my money at local markets and and not at uh, chain restaurants like this mm -hmm. so it's it's better anyway um and it's no real skin off my teeth if all the chain restaurants go that way i'm still gonna just i'll start eating exclusively at markets and cooking at home only but mm -hmm. the problem is if we allow it to get to that point they're mm -hmm. going to start shutting down the market you're not going to they're not going to have a, a local market anymore it's yeah. only going to be supermarkets because the government's going to say no more cash they've right. done it before with with gold confiscation and silver confiscation they'll just yep. give you a deadline and they'll say mm -hmm. oh any you got any gold you have to pay it to us or else it's worthless you have any paper bills you know any us dollars by 20 you know january 1st 2025 if you don't pay us your paper bills they will become worthless from there on and then mm -hmm. boom the whole world it's it's that easy and it is what and what do we have in place to stop it does anybody does anybody you know got all uh, <laughs> Any yeah. big ideas? Is, any, is anybody working on something for when this eventually happens? Does anybody else not see the future like me and you, you know, see this right. down the line? So what's going to happen? Are we all just going to roll over and be like, OK, well, let me get my digital wallet ready, <laughs> ready for the my, what is it? The new world wallet. OK, I guess I guess the, what is it? What's my ID? Six, six, six. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so I have to scan on my forehead. This is weird. <laughs> They say it increases the signal when you put it next to your head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's true. That's true, man. <laughs> I, you know, I get mad with a lot of uh, other flat earthers and truthers, uh, as you probably know. I, I've spazzed on a few of them because I'm like, you know, I, I really did like a lot of these guys. And uh, they started promoting that digital currency. And me, I have never, ever scanned a QR code. I refuse to. I'm never going to do that. And, and I did a live stream on it where I, where I told people, I'm like, it's not a barcode. You know, the QR code is like a code for you. It lets everybody know where you're going. It's, it's, it's you. It's not, it's not the product, you know, uh, where you scan a barcode for a specific type of product. This is a you code where you go. You check in here. You check in there. You know, this is what they use in China. And, uh, you know, they've been around for a long time as well. And people are acting like they're new. And I'm like, if I'm not mistaken, those came out, I want to say, in the 90s. I believe the uh, mm. QR code uh, type of technology and stuff. So it, it's it's just really strange. But it, yeah, it, I, it's not many people I feel that can see that once they do that, like you said, the gold confiscation in the 30s, they're going to to get it all. They're not going to stop. But you know, as I I had released a uh, a part one for the um, Russian Revolution, and that's kind of what it was all based on was it starting somewhere, it growing, festering, and then spreading. You know, another go a government being established somewhere and the main government not seeing what's happening or being ill advised, just deciding, OK, I'm going to let this grow until everybody seizes the palace and, and, and takes over. And now I'm headed down here and now I'm headed to Ar Arvania. I'm going here. I'm going there. And it just kept going and going and going and going. And uh, by the time that anybody wanted to rise up and rebel, it's too late. And it's the same now as people trying to make the truth a uh, a career. 
Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, they're not going to let you do it. You know, once once they have complete control, all everything is going to be going away. You know, there's not going to be any public or private sites like dot com websites, domains. All this stuff's going to completely change. And I see it changing, you know, I, and you see it, obviously. But, uh, you know, I, I've never actually scanned a QR code or or paid any kind of uh, like a, that Bitcoin nonsense because it's it, that's really what it is at the end of the day. And people are it's weird how they're able to flip it the way they do you know how they can turn it upside down and make it seem like this is a private and it's like no this is the most controlled or controllable type of thing you know your connection to the internet which they control through your internet service provider so anything crypto or digital is the most controlled but they're playing it as if this is private. I can make sales and, and do things here without anybody knowing. And it's crazy mm -hmm. how they're able to flip that both ways like that, even though you know what it really is, you know, at the end of the day. But, yeah, just like you said, you know, you'll go in to buy something somewhere. I, I seen some dude. Uh, he started sending me. It, it was it's one. Of, it was a guy that I had met because I meet a lot of, of um, lower, not celebrities, but a lot of musicians, especially in, in my field of work. And uh I, I was I started being friends with one of them really good and, and he seemed like he was moderately awake and there's a lot of people like this. I'm sure you ran into it. And uh, you know, just talking to me occasionally, letting me know how he knows about what's going on. Next thing I see him do, he pulls out his cell phone and holds it up to a machine to scan. And I'm like, So you have your, your wallet on your cell phone? <laughs> I'm like, you 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 know <laughs> what that is right and it's because you know they're they're almost partially awake you know they're like diet on their awakening process where they know something's wrong but they're still falling for some of those those traps you know where it's like yeah i'm gonna pay with my phone i'm like i'm not paying with my phone i'm not gonna pay with my phone you know and and what i do now i don't know if i mentioned it to you i do a lot of uh bartering a lot of like trading and stuff now so outside of uh here um, I work with a lot of farmers. I work with a lot of Amish communities and things. And uh, sometimes they have like, you know, puppies and things that they're trying to generate some money with and stuff. So I get them all set up and sell, you know, but first I got it. You almost have to screen people now if you want to sell them a puppy and stuff, just because mm -hmm. you never know what people are even doing now, especially here where this culture in America is outrageous. And it's like, you never know what some of these people even do so it's like i go and i meet people and stuff and i'm like all right yeah you i i think i think the the the, the puppy might be safe with you you know <laughs> you know what i mean and it's a shame that you got to do that at, at this point but you never know just with especially with like some of the amish communities and stuff um I think a lot of people just try and take as much advantage of them as as they can. So, but like I said, a lot of them, I see them. You know, I'm I'm friends with with a lot of them, and uh, some of their kids are out there. They're working in the field and stuff, and and I mean, they're happy. They're doing exactly what they want to do. They're not on, you know, Fortnite. And they're and a great that. example to us yeah. of how we can boycott some of these modern, yeah. you know, intrusions into our lifestyle that we don't yeah. appreciate. You know, they've yep. been doing it since electricity. I mean, they're, you know, so what a great example of how, you know, we can get, if we can get organized behind a set of principles and get communities set up in, in, in the way that they have, then, you know, these dictates from centralized governments from above that are trying to create the societies that they want aren't going to be successful as long as we can do something like the Amish are doing. So yeah. that's interesting. Um, I didn't realize that you actually had an association with the Amish. So your yeah. name is the Amish Space Station. I was curious, <laughs> how you, how did you come up with that name? I, I actually, it was, it was right when I was just, you know, I was, it was a few years ago, but I was in like neck deep doing research like crazy. But I grew up uh, like farming and stuff. So I'm not really from the city or anything. I'm on the East Coast, but I'm, I'm not from the city. So my uh, my grandfather, he's 94, but uh, he he still he still works right now. Um, he managed a lot of like estates and stuff. And that's really how, you know, because I've, I've been working with like Amish communities and everything for years. And I've been doing like my own work and stuff as far as, uh, you know, hay and different things. Um, I don't really have neighbors, but the closest people around me all have like horse farms and stuff like that. And uh, I've always had 
uh, farm animals and and different things ever since I was younger. And that's kind of just how my uh, entire family kind of grew up. Um, just basically on like plantation style stuff, um, out here, farmland and stuff. And, um, I, so I'm, I've been used to working with like the Amish for a long time, but the Amish space station, uh, I don't really know. I I'll tell you though, I woke up out of my sleep. I was asleep and it was like two or so in the morning. I don't, I don't even remember the time. And I just instantly woke up and I'm like, Amish space station. <laughs> That's it right there. <laughs> so I have these random things where I'm playing all these instruments and stuff. I play like almost 10 different instruments. And whenever I get, you know, super excited for something, I just, you know, it's, it's a, it's a sight. If you, you know, I might do some live in studio recordings, but it's a, it's a sight to see, but uh, we get, you know, my whole group, we get wound up like beyond belief, start throwing each other around and stuff and just fe feeding off of the energy to try and make some amazing type of music. And it's all in fun. And, uh, and, uh, they're, they're rowdy, but, uh, it, it just, whenever it comes to me like that, or I get something amazing, it's like, that's exactly how I feel about NASA as far as, you know, their entire, you know, my space station is just as real as there, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. And, and, uh, you know, but, but it also, you know, that was actually the real thing was, uh, you know, I actually work with Amish people here on the uh, East coast, uh, e Eastern, you know, shore area and stuff. So. You know, it's kind of like a play on play in the same way. And I've seen some people left me some comments, you know, they, some anti, you know, some Glovers, of course, just like, oh, you know, it would have been cool if, uh, you know, if you had some rockets made of wood. And I'm like, no, you, you just you missed the entire point of, you know, and, and they're like, oh, well, you know, but they, a lot of them, they don't, you know, as far as in general. A lot of the hate that I've gotten has been like people looking at me like you're not Amish. I'm like. I never actually said that I was Amish under any circumstance. <laughs> As I said, the name of the network is Amish Space Station. And <laughs> it's like a truth network. It's not, it's not, an, it's not really an Amish network. <laughs> but people got really, I, I, I was surprised at how many people were triggered by it. And I'm like, man, you guys got to, you got to relax a little bit. Uh, you know, stop being an emotional being and kind of, because that's what America is at this point is, uh, you know, a lot of people in general, I talk about America, but they're emotional. Like, like you say, they just, uh, any feeling they feel, they just shoot out and respond to it. You know, like, oh, this, this is me. This is who I am. You know, somebody just attacked the president, said something negative about, you know, the president. So mm -hmm. they just insulted me. Now I have to jump across them and scratch them because, you know, that's who I am. I identify as this person, you know, and that's that's part of it. But, yeah, it was an awesome name. I wanted to create a new network and that was like the best name ever. It woke me up out of my sleep. I don't know how it happened. But I was I was asleep and I remember waking up at like two in the morning like that's it. That's the name. <laughs> so I wrote an entire album. Um, I haven't recorded it yet, but uh, it's it's like an alternative uh, alternative style of music. But it actually because uh, I, I was going to send you an email about it, but it's a it's a play on uh, words album where uh, some of the names of the songs are like the straw man, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I got it over here. But it's um it's a lot of like historical stuff, um, where the names are play off of those, and and I actually wrote the songs. Not telling the story of what happened, but reenacting it in a way, mm -hmm. you know, I'm kind of like an art form type of heavily art driven, you know, I like for things to have a message. So, of course, when all this mumble rap nonsense started coming out, I was like, I don't know what this is, but we need to stop it now, you know, and I was like leading this anti every I mean, I was trolling celebrities so hard that a couple of them actually responded back to me. You know, I was like all across their their network, Facebook, looking for their, you know, just just because it was destroying like, a, you know, well, promoting some... <laughs> drugs and stuff like they're doing now. It's completely different than when I was younger listening to some of the music. It's like, uh, you know, they're just promoting, hey, pop as many drugs as you can and, and, and do this. I'm like, that's not it was violence when I was younger. But not, and if you do don't, much this mumble rap won't sound good. Yeah, <laughs> like the, yeah. The, the way I, they I, they speak it and the the beats are like you have to be on lean or something to to be able to appreciate it. You gotta be yeah. slowed down to like this degree. Yeah. Of games. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm on their wavelength now. <laughs> That's it's the insane. problem with that music. It really does. I mean, talk about gateway drug. 
music like that is a gateway drug because you can't even appreciate it unless you're on the drugs that they're rapping about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a frequency. It's a yeah. real frequency. And I realized to me that stuff sounds like uh, static on the radio. And I realize other people when it's, you know, that's why they say like the music you consume because it's uh, it's like you are taking it inside of you and you're letting it speak to your subconscious. And I realized I was against it when I was younger, but I realized listening to all that like violent music when I was younger, it actually impacted me to where I thought, you know, that some of those guys were actually gangsters. And now look at them now and I'm like, these guys are actors. Mm -hmm. They're all actors, you know, right. some of them talking about how much they smoke and they run a mile in like five minutes. You know, I'm like, no, no, you're you you hit the gym every day and you're lying on your song saying, you know, getting other people to want to be just like you. And they were preaching it to, you know, impressionable ages and stuff, you know, especially when I was younger and stuff. You know, I was listening to a lot of guys that were just, you know, it was like I said, it wasn't as bad as it is now. But now it's like, you know, you listen to them now and it's all drugs, violence and just, you know, fornication, of course, 24 seven. And there's no attachment. So I've I've kind of lost the attachment uh, to like almost like a humanity here in America, you know, like a person to person, because it's like everywhere I go, it's like I'm looking at different creatures. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I stopped and pulled over and just opened up my laptop at a, uh, a Dunkin Donuts. I, <laughs> I, I recorded a little bit of it, but I, I was just trying to like relax, unwind a little bit, get some writing done. The next thing I know, three people start banging on my car window and it's these three girls and they're like, can you take a picture? I'm like, no, because they were acting really crazy. So they were barely dressed out in the parking lot, dancing and just looking at their phones. I'm like, you guys are aliens to me. You know, I'm like, I can't even understand what's going on. It's like there's music out there, but, you know, there's there's no music. The music's in their head somewhere <laughs> and mm -hmm. they're out in public, like barely dressed, shaking and stuff going. I'm like, dude, this is you know so I, I i rolled down the window i'm like you guys are all psychotic and i'm like they threw up their middle fingers and stuff i'm like you guys need go get help go get help <laughs> so they got angry i guess thought i was being mean but I, I can't even relate to a lot of people here anymore because of how twisted they are you know they're just in their instagram world you know mm. and and it's outrageous I, I i can't get down with that type of stuff man but let me ask you another question real quick eric um so another question I had for you was um, the stress type of thing. Like how how exactly do you de-stress from the research? And, you know, because it is necessary to do the research. Because one of my friends, uh, real quick, he was like, dude, you got to stop looking up all this. It's, it's, it's upsetting you. It's getting you worked up. I'm like, it's going to come to your front door. I said, we have to stop it. We have to acknowledge it. I can't run from it. You know, he's like, well, yeah, but you can take it easy sometimes. I'm like, yeah, I, I could, but we got to pay attention to it because it's going to. And sure enough, that was in 2019. Mm. And uh, three, three or four months later, you know, that was December. So a few months later, it was at his door, the doorstep right there. And mm -hmm. he called me and he's like, dude, you know, all I wanted to do was live my life. I said, dude, they're not going to let you. You're not mm. allowed <laughs> to live your life free. They're not allowed, you know. So he learned that really quick. But how how would you um, some of your techniques? I know you've done some videos on it, but. If uh, some people find this stuff out, it can be stressful at first when they discover, like, you know, the reality. How, how would you go about, you know, de-stressing and, and relaxing and, and working through that? Mm. That was a multi-part answer to that. Um, like, so one, one way to help alleviate the emotions that come about from learning all of these things about conspiracies and politics and the direction the new world order is trying to take the world um, is to be active and to do activism and to use your power to do anything you can that you can think of uh, using your creativity uh, and your influence um, whether it be speaking up boycotting doing um, online activism making videos stickers pamphleteering in mailboxes, making a newsletter to on an email list to all your all people that uh, you know that are on the same wavelength or that would at least 
read articles or watch videos that you'll send them, um, things like this, so that you're not just a passive observer seeing the world go to shit all around you and, and uh, woe is me, uh, you know. You actually have to do something, you have to get active to get out of that emotional space and that will at least raise you up uh, to some higher vibration. Um, though, of course, you know, researching all the time and then doing activism all the time, that's going to raise your stress levels as well because of how much stuff you're doing, how much externalization you're doing. And so you also have to balance it by making sure you have plenty of time for yourself and things to do for yourself. That for me, is meditation, yoga, uh, martial arts, uh, especially I think for guys, for our masculine energy, it's good to be able to just, you know, beat a punching bag sometimes. <laughs> it's it's exactly what you need. And if you don't do it, you're going to end up snapping or yelling at, at someone you shouldn't or something like that instead. Um, so it's good to, to get out that kind of energy through martial arts. Um, like I said, yoga and meditation to try and center yourself and the massage is a really good one um, if you can yeah, pay for massages or if you have someone that loves you that's <laughs> better you know the best massages you can get and give are um, with your significant other and they're free of course that's uh, a great de-stressor um, and also just you know whatever your preferred entertainment is you know video games or movies or whatever it's fine to indulge in a little bit of that, you know, at night before bed or, or something like that. Um, just so you have something that you can turn your brain off, because even I do that, like I'm, I speed read and I can, you know, I, I go through so much information in a day on the research end. And then I've also gotten really fast at uh, the activism end, meaning like I'm able to create videos and proliferate them on social medias and I have like click of a button. <laughs> I'm on so many different sites now and I have a, what would you call it, like a, a thing that I do, like every time I upload I have all these sites I go through and so I have a framework for how to be effective in getting these things out and then when I'm done I allow myself to shut my brain off and you know watch uh, a movie or play a video game or something like that and then I'm refreshed and wanting to get back to work because I mean for I don't know for, especially the more you get into this the less entertaining the less entertaining entertainment is like as as a kid I would I could entertain myself all day with video games and movies and stuff now as you know, as the reality of these things is on your shoulders and you see it like like your friend in 2019, you know, you might want to be living one way and then 2020 comes and it's like, OK, you know, mm -hmm. how can you just sit there and distract yourself with distractions or entertain yourself with entertainments when true negativity, you know, true enslavement is on your doorstep? Uh, you have to take action and, um, you know, the your free time, that those little moments that you just take a breath truly become just that. Um, and so so I'm, I'm saying to balance yourself by allowing yourself distractions and entertainment, but don't get lost in them and, and uh, use them as escape escapism like a lot of people do because you want to be a player in history and not just be a pawn that, you know, is sacrificed. And we definitely have power and the the time to use it is is coming up it's like everything's coming to a head now where the complete centralization you know the the peak of this new world order will be when there truly is just one digital currency and you cannot buy or sell unless you're on it and uh, there may just be one government and all dictates are sent down from the un say or some other centralized structure and I'm um, talking about that in the future, but like we said, in 2020, isn't that what we already saw? It's already in place. Whenever these random people whose names we don't even really know want, you know, want it to be so, 
they have their figureheads in place in power positions to simultaneously lock down the entire world so nobody can even leave their house. Like when before in history has that level of centralized power existed? Never. When have we allowed it as humanity? When have we been so dumbed down and, you know, enslaved mentally that we don't stand up in unison, you know, and completely boycott something like that? Instead, what do we do? <laughs> Six feet. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> like, what? What happened, people? It, it was the most surreal three years ever. And I hope that when they... You know, it's like a torture dial. They turn it down and they turn it off. And right now they just turned, they scaled it back a little bit because because we, you know, three years of that crap, people like your friend were waking up. And they're like, okay, well, we can't have too many wake up. It's the totalitarian tiptoe, not the totalitarian steamroll. They got to do it slowly. And so they'll turn it back on. But while we're in one of these phases where it's, you know, not so bad, that's our time to get out there uh, you know, use this this free time that we have before the next thing, whatever it may be, because there will be. They create these events and then they use them. Problem, reaction, solution, their modus operandi. When you want to make a society, you know, tailor fit to the, the way that you want it to be, you can't just enact a law and then society goes along with it. No, no, there's a process. There's a soap opera process and the male-centered soap opera that I've been talking about works like this, where in the news they they propagate some thing that may have really happened or may not have even happened, but it, it seems like it does if it's on 24 hours on every news channel in the world. <laughs> and then that garners a reaction, a reaction that they knew would happen because you're going to be you know, angry or sad or distressed some way about this problem that they presented you with. And then right after that reaction comes, oh, they're going to have this solution here for you. Oh, and, you know, they, they, they get your emotions. Oh, and then oh, right in the right time, they throw the solution for you so that, oh, I can just keep watching my TV and they're going to mm -hmm. deal with it for me again. Every, every time. I love how it works like this participatory democracy. It's just so easy. I just sit back, you know, watch them create and solve my problems for me. Yeah. And that's why the world has gotten so much more controlled uh, to, to the degree that it's at now, where they can say that there's some some floaty, somebody ate some bat soup in China, and then it floated all across the world. Ooh, and you go to, oh, you can't get through. Oh, but we've got the cure. If we let us into your bloodstream, and then the bat soup poison won't affect you. <laughs> and there's people like 50 50 percent of the population here still wearing masks because they still got cv propaganda going on the tv all the time yeah yeah yep. i i see people here i've you know even some people i don't i've worked with i haven't seen their faces in years now <laughs> you know i'm like man you know you know i got one guy to finally you know take it off and i got to see his face Again, I'm like, that doesn't that feel better, you know, and uh, he started laughing at me. But I mean, I think a lot of people, they're all mentally damaged. You know, they're all so mentally damaged by it all, um, especially the kids, too, you know, who have to live through some of that. And uh, yeah, like like you said, it was a wake up call, you know, I think for a lot of people, you know, because I'm kind of, you know, that's that's why I feel the way I feel now, because I'm kind of really angry about it. And, uh, you know, I don't look at it the same anymore now. And I still try to adhere to giving people information and showing the, the proof behind a lot of it. But after and I tell people this all the time, after what we just lived through for people who actually know what everything really was, you know, and, and really did the research. You know, me, I sat down for almost 10 hours a day from 2019, just about at the start of that thing, for almost 10 hours a day, I was actually sitting in with different doctors and talking with people and stuff. And, uh, you know, so I pretty much had just mastered everything that really went down there. And it's really upsetting. I'm to the point now where I don't even need proof anymore. It's like, if they say something that I don't like, I'm like, ah, I, but you just did the, you know, it's like the, the, the boy who cried wolf. It's like, once you lie enough, 
mm-hmm. you lose the the whole credibility thing where I don't have to prove any of it anymore. You know, I've proven that you lied 50 times here. I don't have to prove the 51st, 52nd exactly. or any of that. That's why flat earth is so important and influential because yeah. it, it's so fundamental and foundational. And when people wake up to realizing that something like that is a lie that everyone believes and all political systems, countries, mm-hmm. um, you know, every space agency, universities and and books and everything, all these things are duplicitous in propping up a gargantuan lie like that. It beca- It's like the boy who cried wolf. It becomes mm-hmm. almost impossible for you to be deluded and deceived to that degree again, which is why I, I say it's flat earth is like the Achilles heel of the new world order. It's not the heart. Someone got a- a- at me about it. And I, I agree, like there's other issues that you could say are more um, that like, uh, you know, for instance, the money issue, like getting back to like uh, some legitimate form of money or or having decentralization of currencies and allowing new banks to open up and these kind of things. That would be like the front door, you know, mm-hmm. this or the heart, you know, the money system or the political system are the heart of the new world order. I agree with that. I'm saying flat earth is the Achilles heel. It's that little part on the back of your foot yeah. <laughs> that the the uh, you know in the in the the greek myth was sliced and, and then you can't walk anymore and that's what i'm saying flat earth is like that in the sense that all of these other deceptions rely on this foundation and if you slice that achilles heel open all these other deceptions and all these other propaganda methods that they've been using uh, as i said in i think my previous podcast I don't, I I think I know one or two flat earthers that fell for the 2020 propaganda and many of the others. It's one of the only demographics I know of that didn't fall for it. You know, like the vegans, a lot of vegans fell for it and a a lot of other demographics that I'm involved in that are awake in some sectors of society, but still blinded in others. Mm -hmm. But this flat earth thing, it's so foundational that when you wake up to it, all those other conspiracies and deceptions and lies and the, the political everything, it, it just, you really take a step back and you have a real skeptical eye about everything. So again, it's that being the witness thing like we were talking about at the beginning when you learn a new language or you go to a new country or you do meditation. When you research to that degree and you find out how gargantuan the lies are, no longer does consensus reality um, delude you. You know, you're not. You don't just give a truth verdict to something because 99% of the public believes one way. That doesn't sway you anymore like it might have before. So it, it's a whole new way of being that the flat Earth revelation institutes in people, and that revelation uh, can end the new world order easily. Yeah. And, and it's so relevant to everyone because we're all living on this flat earth and it's yeah. so easy to to find the truth of it because you can do your own experiments uh, to figure it out any day. Unlike every other conspiracy, which is so full of minutia and it's someone else and some other place and some other time, it's difficult to, to, to know 100% some of these other conspiracies. But this biggest conspiracy of all is the easiest one to know. So right. in that in that way, it's it's this Achilles heel that's just waiting for us to slice it. <laughs> that's why I've been pushing it so hard ever since I figured out it was the truth. I was like, oh my god, this is how we can wake the world up. This, they're lying about this thing. How dare yeah. they? How dare they yeah. go that far? They went too far. <laughs> we, we we're all living on this thing, you know. But but that was before 2020. Jeez, <laughs> once that happened, that's like. Okay, well, they just did another worldwide thing like that. There's a meme I love that it's like that Willy Wonka thing, and he's like, "Oh, so you you think that all the world's governments couldn't be involved? Uh, be, you know, the world couldn't be flat because that would mean all the world's governments involved." It's like, uh, "How how's that worldwide quarantine treating you?" <laughs> it's like, yeah, people use that that line, that line of thinking all the time that. Oh, there couldn't be a lie that big because that would mean all these people are in on it. It's like, what happened in 2020? 
you know, the whole world shut down based on that. You could still believe that bat mm -hmm. soup or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, that is a lie. The, yeah. No matter what, no matter what narrative, you know, there's a bunch of narratives they were trying to speak. They're all lies. All the mainstream narratives for that thing were lies. Yeah. <clears throat> all of them. Yeah. Yep. Uh, every single one of them. And, <laughs> and it just, just like you say, it is, it, that actually was the big thing for me was, was that because I was chasing a lot of like politics and I was trying to explain different things from 2001 and what really went down there and all that. And I was working around all of it. And I realized it was, you know, even when I was looking up UFOs and stuff, it was never an answer and it never, it, it was a circle. So you would, you know, NASA released some footage here. Check this out. And nobody knows anything about it. It's gone. Next thing you know, somebody else got this and they're covering up something. They're hiding. And it was that. It was cover up. It was hiding. It was this. There was never answers until you actually learn about, you know, Earth and stuff. the so flat Earth. And you're like, OK, so so now you understand all of this. You know, what you're looking at is cartoons, you know, essentially, you know, all the volcanoes on Mars and stuff that were exploding and everything going on. Like, you know, people are wrapped up into that. But like you said, it should be really easy, you know, especially after the whole, you know, now. But, you know, it's weird. It's like they're flipping the scripts now and, and they showed the whole world was together during that. And then they flip the script again upside down and they're like, OK, now Russia's the bad guy. And this is who we point fingers at now right on cue. So everybody forgot that Russia followed every directive the same way as everyone else did. And now all of a sudden they're a loose cannon again. You know, now all of a sudden they're and I'm like, you know, it, it should be obvious to people. But I guess the grip of that propaganda is so strong that they can see the truth in front of them sometimes and still not be able to, uh, you know, to, to to rectify it. But as far as Earth and stuff, you know, you yourself, you there's more than enough information out here there was another hit piece that another guy had had did i did a video on because he's up here talking about how the earth is like I'm, I'm in alaska so if the sun is way over here on that thingy and it's in you know how's it how's it sunny here i'm like dude you know this stuff it, it's almost like i don't even want to respond to some of it because i know that they haven't done any research into it at all a lot and of they times should it's be just embarrassed. Like that. they're not debunking uh, anything they're asking you a question well, well right. how would this work? You know, right. Um, right. So you're asking me a question. You're not, you haven't refuted anything. You've just mm -hmm. asked me a question and I guarantee you don't want to know the answer. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> because if you, did, you, if you did, you would have researched it before now and found the answer yeah. rather yeah. than asking it to me in this gotcha manner. Like just yeah. asking me a flat earth question <laughs> is going to stump me. <laughs> and that, like we haven't studied it for, for years. Like, you know, because for me it was surreal. And especially even when NASA just came in, because sometimes you learn it and you're still like, well, maybe, maybe the ball still could be true, possibly somewhere. Maybe in NASA it came out. But for me, I kind of knew and I'm like, man, this is this is really like you said, it was really serious. And then NASA came on. They're like, yeah, um, the Earth, the moon is inside the Earth's atmosphere. And I seen that on the headlines of NASA. I'm like, what the hell did they just say? I'm like, you know, and I showed I showed my friend. He was like his eyes got all big. And I was like. Yeah, you see what's going on now. I'm like, they're they're not going to stop. They're going to move the 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 goalposts over and over and over, and they're not going to stop. It's like everything from what you thought you knew 50 years ago has been upended at this point now. And it's like, you know, oh, I looked at the moon; it was in outer space. Blah blah blah. It's like, no, the, NASA said it's not in outer space. That's what they say themselves, and it, it's amazing, you know, because I never thought that I would see some of that stuff, but that that a lot of that actually really sealed the deal, and it went from, you know, me defending them, and I wasn't a defender hard at all. I, I was mainly upset with uh, Eddie Bravo, because he was he was just like, man, look, it, I know he's talking to Joe Rogan. He's like, it, trust me, man, it is. It, like, you don't understand. I'm like, Eddie, you got to stop. You got to stop. And I'm like, okay, I'm debunking him right now. I'm so, you know, I found you. I'm like, huh? Well, damn. All right. <laughs> so after that, Eddie was like, one of my favorite guys. I'm like, dude, yeah, he's, he's telling the truth now. Now, if he's not on a show, I'm like, yeah, I don't think I want to see it anymore. <laughs> and before it was the opposite. Cause like I had that kind of rage response to it at first. I was like, he has to stop. He has to stop saying that, you know? And then I realized but I think a lot of people, they don't know, like, what it really means about how every single space agency is actually lying to you. 
you know, even even when it comes to Elon and all this this freedom fighting for your freedom and then appointing some World Economic Forum person to run Twitter and all this nonsense. It's all a game. It's a big game mm -hmm. for for them. And it, once you once you realize that, you know, then you understand. But a lot that a lot of the things that actually grab people is like they, they say that and are like, well, how come Russia is not saying anything? They don't like us. I'm like, you know, you're not getting it. They are partners. They're all partners in this entire thing. You know, I just I, so I pointed out in uh, in in my my revolution video that a lot of the royalty they're all related to each other. You know what I mean? Especially during World War One and stuff, they're all like related to each other over there, and uh, the Europe area and stuff. And I'm like, that's that's what's that's what it is. You know, you got to understand this is bigger than what you're thinking. It's like there nobody's gonna come forward. And and I, like I said, even in my video, I said we've already came forward. You know, we've we've been you yourself, you've been writing books in I don't know how many different languages, putting out this information for people to see and gather. Uh, people have spoke out ab about this. You know, I, pilots have been speaking out. I don't know who they want to speak out. I think they just want NASA. I, I, they, they want, even like, Trump spoke out. You know, so want, like, Trump like, said we got NASA space spokesperson. Force. Yeah, uh, huh? everyone, everyone's waiting for some NASA spokesperson or Neil Tyson or something to come out and just be like, yeah. we've been lying to you the whole time. Yeah. The earth is flat. These pictures are all CGI. We're not going to steal your, you know, we're not going to steal billions of dollars of your money every year for free now for some reason. And we're just going to fess up to it all for fun. Like it's never, it's <laughs> and, never going to happen. They're, they're stealing so much money. They're making so much bank. Like yeah. why would they ever like, and, and liars, like how often does a liar sincerely come forward apologize and then reform their ways like you're really expecting that and on a scale right. this 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 large right. come on now I mean, how, you've been watching many too many prisoners? movies yeah. right right how many prisoners do you have that's ever really confessed they walk in knowing they did it and they're like i plead innocent you know like <laughs> they know they did it and they're still not going to come out and be like no no you know they're not going to tell you the truth uh, and just like you said some of them have you know as far as tyson you know he said it was flat you know, the same as uh, as as Trump, he said it too. He's out. We got space force without space. It's like you know, so they they come out and actually tell people, you know, what the reality is. But people are so they're so hooked on it that it, it's weird. But I th I think just from twenty twenty, a lot of that has shaken a little, you know, loose a little bit, and they're more open because I'm not seeing as much hatred toward mm -hmm. it. But before it was a lot of hatred directed, I noticed, uh, and you know, anybody who thought that they were just ridiculed. Now it's, the, you know, you're getting a lot of people acknowledging it as far as the past president, you know, and, and other people are actually acknowledging different things now, you know, I don't know if it's part of their plan to try and make it look bad in some kind of way, depending on if it's like a, a meeting or a society or some crap like that, uh, conference, whatever it's called. But uh, some of that stuff, I'm like, you know, because it has to be done the right way. And I think a lot of that stuff can be bad publicity. And it has to, you know, because I watched some of the films that, that came out. I like Level. I, I loved Level. Level was amazing. And uh, that's the weird thing is some of these people are so wrapped up in the nonsense that it's like they actually put Level clips on their video trying to debunk what you guys were saying in there i'm like you do know you just showed the earth from 120,000 feet not spinning and they put it up there and they have no idea that it was actually up there or uh a, a couple of the other ones were you know the boats over the curve and stuff and one of the one it's this huge youtube dude uh you know more than half a million subscribers on his on his network uh just on youtube alone and uh he he, he put out a hit piece and i'm just like but he, he puts a lot of other stuff that's, you know, po like political, but it's all just nonsense. And I'm like, it's left, right divide. And but every time that flat earth is brought up, I notice that some of those really, really big guys that a lot of people travel to go see and go meet, they just they do hit pieces on it. They're like, you know, I've flown on an airplane, I've flown across the world. You know, you're not going to be able to tell me that it's. I'm like, dude, you don't know which direction you're going, really, at the end of the day. You know, you can, you, you know, and like I said, other people have documented these flight paths. Mm. And they're like, oh, I've been looking at this since 1989. I'm like, no, you haven't. No, no, you haven't. I've been looking at it a couple of years ago and I've uh, I've learned all this. <laughs> it's like, I know for a fact you have been looking at it for 30 years and you still, 
you still think you're moving and spinning right now, you know? So I kind of get fired up and I feel like I have to respond sometimes to some of those guys because because it's, it's really some of them are blaming the flat earth where they, they felt as if everything was coming together. And then when flat earth was started picking up traction, it divided people completely, split them right down the middle. And I'm like, I don't really think that, uh, you know, I don't think that that's really what it was. I think it, 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 some of the people that were awake that had the capacity to understand, they learned it. And then the other people that didn't, you know, they, they hated it and maybe came along to learn it later. Like me at first, you know, I was, I was against it and I'm, you know, but now it's like, you know, there, there's no proofs of, of, you know, any kind of movement or any kind of curvature or anything, quite frankly. And it's like, you can't deny reality. And then you see what's going on now where guys are girls and girls are guys violating the law of identity now. So nobody really knows, you know, I, I hear truthers now, you probably heard it. They say, yeah, I think it's a globe and it's flat at the same <laughs> time. Like, dude, why, why don't you just, just wake up, you know, just pick, choose a side. Nobody mm-hmm. wants the traitor who's going to stab you in the back and pretend to be your friend. You know, next thing you know, they're it's turning a, on you. It's a simulation, they say. And wow. so it can be a globe and flat at the same time. That's and it. That's apparently, it. apparently it doesn't have to be, there, there doesn't need to be a God. So <laughs> someone commented that the other day. So that with this new simulation <laughs> theory, people yeah. are now running circles in their brains thinking that it's possible to, because everything is a simulation, whatever that means to them, means that you no longer have to have a intelligent designer like a purposeful creator like what yeah well who's running the simulation who started the simulation and it can be a globe and flat at the same time well Mm -hmm. how we we have (laughs) sensory experience we have empirical data we can we can actually experiment with the physicality and know whether it's one or the other it can't physically be both no man it's like how, how how much drugs have these people been on it's flat and a sphere, okay. and it's concave, and hollow, <laughs> and it's also a square. And the sun, <laughs> the sun goes in circles that you can see for 24 hours, but it also goes through Enoch, Enoch Pac-Man portals, because it says so in the Book of Enoch. <laughs> oh, and there's 178, <laughs> there's 178 extra continents beyond Antarctica that no one has ever seen. But they exist because somebody drew them on a crappy little map somewhere oh. and said so. <laughs> oh, I meant to ask you about that. That winds me up. People get so angry. And I tell them, I'm like, man, if we can't go below the 60th, how about we get to Antarctica first before yeah. we actually talk about places yeah. that are like yeah. 15 days <laughs> of traveling? You know, yeah. you'd be traveling for a month to get there. You don't even know what's there. It's like that, you know, whether or not there's more land, I tell people, it, it's, that's all fine. Of those maps want. are different. You know, the Buddhist map with the little yeah. continents, the Martin Kinney cosmic egg map with the three rings, and then the 178 ring map. All the continents are shaped different in different alignments and different spaces. Yeah. So clearly none of this is based on anything but imagination people, but man, the, like, it triggers me a lot because I don't know whether it's like a super driven propaganda campaign or if it has just diluted the flat earth community so much, but I get more comments about these, like the moon map thing. The moon is the true map of the earth, as well as the Nos Confundin map and the egg cosmic egg map and all these maps that are not based on anything that we can verify. Right. Meanwhile, the, the simple, azimuthal equidistant map which is just basically the globe but splayed out yeah. or you could say it's the the globe is the flat earth splayed into a globe mm-hmm. therefore that is the most universally accepted map and and I, like i say i don't i don't use any one map or model and claim it to be the truth right. i i just use them all for visualizations and approximate approximations but the funny thing is is the ae map seems to be under the most scrutiny and like the most attack of any map and then all these other ridiculous maps like the 178 little squiggles is getting promoted endlessly and i get comment after comment and video after video trying to say like eric why aren't you getting on board with this it's so you know so obvious that the you know it's like where is the steam 
for this idea coming because there is no physical verification for any of this stuff. So how are people getting so on it? I just got one comment from someone that's like, the earth is an infinite plane, Eric, and you're, uh, you know, <laughs> covering it up. It's like, how can you say definitely that the earth is an infinite plane? Have you walked infinitely to <laughs> like, right. we can't even know that. <laughs> but th this yeah. person is, is like calling me a, a controlled opposition because I'm not verifying the truth of the infinite plane. <laughs> you can't know that. Where do you see America heading as far as like, uh, just as an offshoot real quick, do you see America in the future kind of, because um, to me, it looks like they can go many different routes with the situation they have going on with the Russia situation to possible false happenings to, you know, another shutdown, climate issues, blah, 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 any possible way 15 minute cities a lot of that type of stuff do, what do you see even you know the upcoming election which i already know you know you already know you know i don't even know if i that's kind of why i might just like leave the country for that for a while just to go out on some island and act like it doesn't even exist you know because i really don't think i can control myself around people who are glued to the tv and just watching this 2024 whatever they're going to do because it's going to mm -hmm. you know but i just want to know what did you think would be the 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 possible or a possible future for America. Do you see it from where you are? Do you see it heading differently, like headed to a different path um, than me as far as war or something like that? Or mm. is that what where you see potentially? As I, war? I, I don't know. I it, Because of what they did, I kind of think that they could uh, shut us all down, do some martial law stuff. They could just use this war and bankrupt us even more than what, what technically we already are. You know, I know all that is just for show, but it's it's, you know, if if people believe it, you know, it's like my favorite line from The Matrix. If you believe it, then it, that's what makes it real. So it's one of those things where people are up here just believing it. So they could do a whole other war situation and, and, and spark it off and then shut us down. Or they could just tank the economy mm -hmm. and kind of just like, you know, make that play out. And uh, or they could uh, have some kind of crisis happen because cows are dangerous, mm. you know, and you got to be real careful, especially with them breathing and farting and all that. They're killing us, mm -hmm. you know, so they could do anything. You know, we got to get to zero carbon. You know, I went around my job. I told people, I'm like, dude, I think we all should just collectively jump off the bridge. <laughs> and and, 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 and don't crazy. breathe out while we're falling. <laughs> don't exhale. Don't exhale. You'll, you'll, you'll harm the earth. <laughs> I told a dude, I said, man, I know what your problem is. Have you looked at your carbon footprint? He said, uh, I already fixed it. I bought a smaller shoe and I'm like, that's it right there. That's how you, that's how you beat it. You know, <laughs> that dude was awesome, man. But uh, yeah, I was just wondering what, what you thought about that. Cause there's like three, it's bad when they have three different angles that they probably could successfully pull off, you right. know, any of them, I think they could pull off. I mean, is that what you see or do you see anything different? Exactly. I think that there's, they probably have contingency plan A, B and C, and then they look at, the world stage and you know how people are leaning at the time and you know now with ai they can just run these models through some of these kind of ai systems and figure out how the public is going to react that you can you can you have so much information processing in these data systems now that they can create artificial intelligence models to give them pretty much uh you know uh statistics of how this speech would fare, how this policy would be accepted, these kind of things. So it's not even up to uh, chance at this point. Mm -hmm. Now they've they got so much information on us and how to manipulate us that they can do so stati in a statistical way. In a democracy, all they have to do is manipulate the 51%, you know, over the 49% which is why media, the mainstream media is like the fourth branch of a democratic government because yeah. the other <laughs> the other three are essentially held at bay by the whim of the majority, which can easily be controlled by propaganda. 
So mm -hmm. if you've got a small elite that is able to sway the majority population with mainstream media and the mainstream education system, now you have a malleable population that you can tailor to go whichever direction you want while making them believe that they are the people <laughs> making the decisions and it's going the way that the majority wants it to go at all times. And, uh, and you're just creating bigger and bigger minorities and divisions to the point of like, who is the majority in America? Is there any party that has 51% backing at this point or, or any candidate or any, you know, any in most spheres at this point, we're so divided, like even in like religious sects or something, mm -hmm. most, most, you know, for instance, what percentage of Christians are this denomination, this denomination, this denomination, Right. This denomination has 1%, this has 2%, to the point that there is no ma majority denomination of Christianity that exists, and so we're completely scattered in, in and I'm just using that as an example, but yeah. all all sectors of society, it, it, it tends towards that, and I think about this often because I don't know the answer, because in a sense, I like decentralization, and it makes sense to me that everyone should have their own version of how you think of Christianity. So right. in my book, if there's two billion Christians, there should be two billion denominations because right. you should all be thinking by yourself what this right. this means to you. Um, and when you try to group it in, it's like, oh, well, how can yeah. everyone fit into a group? So I have this issue where it's like, like you were saying, it's like we're being divided. Yeah. Okay, that's a problem. But at the same time, the other problem is centralization. The right. new world order, and yeah. so what? What is it we want here? Do we want centralization because we need to be centralized to be able to fight the other bad centralized thing, or is the answer decentralization, which is basically the division that they're yeah. harboring anyway? So, do we want to be divided? Is this good actually? Because we're all just super divided. We're all our own thinking, our own ways, and individuals. Uh, if we actually had freedom and lived in a voluntarist society. I think that level of decentralization and division would be good. Yeah. But since we're not actually living in that society, uh -huh. we're living in a con very controlled and centralized society that is creating that kind of division. So it's like division, not decentralized. <laughs> we have centralized division, centralized divisiveness. What we really want is decentralized unity. Ooh. Right, right, <laughs> right. We, we all <laughs> we all want to be, you know, our own, doing our own thing on our own path, having freedom. But yeah. somehow or another, we all need to get on board with this. We all have to, like I said, flat Earth can be one step that we can yeah. all understand that. Hey, we're all we're not on this spinning globe thing that all the governments and all the mainstream media and the education systems are telling us. We can yeah. all get off of that lie and get on right. this new foundation. And from there, other foundations can be built, such as I'm saying the 2020 thing, you know, maybe we can all agree that that was a big lie, you know, and, and then further and build. But we don't need to necessarily create a group that has a name that's like the, the Flat Earth 2020 Denier Club. Right. Like, uh, <laughs> we, that's not what we need. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's yeah. how do you get a unity of humanity? without going into some grouping that can be easily controlled or steered off course. That's right. my big question that I keep coming coming back to because it's yeah. like we want we want unity of decentralization. It's like this paradox. How do we how do we all come together to fight collectivism? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cuz you know it, it's actually them. They're they're the ones, you know, the controllers and things. They are the 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 unity the unified ones you know and that that is the issue it is them you know but you know, just like you said coming together to be able to to tear that down you know i the, the I, I i've i've said even in my music and stuff it's the it's the media really that controls everything whatever yeah. happens in here you know even from state to state you will never know what goes on from in a state next to you here in america unless it's on the media and it's on the television or something I don't really like the culture 
and I don't like the, the, the people as who they have become. There are some people that are amazing. I, I'm not, it's not a blanket statement. I mean, it just says in general, um, mm. they're not good people. It's like, if I have a flat tire, I'm not really expecting anybody to actually stop and, and help me. And maybe they would now because they, you know, unfortunately, everybody's so brainwashed now that it's like if they see me pulled over with a flat tire and they ride by they might think like blm is going to come to their house and do some crazy <laughs> stuff so they're like okay it's my duty to help him it doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't matter if he's dangerous or not you know because a lot of um a lot of like uh, just white people in general are the ones being targeted and attacked here really bad and uh it's a crazy campaign and it's really, really weird because I, I, I talk with, you know, a few white guys at my job and they're like, yeah, man, you know, Virginia just has all those those white races. I'm like, dude, just stop. Just stop with all this nonsense. I'm like, there's people from every race that have mental issues that are racist against someone else for whatever. I'm like, you know, and they're just no, no, no. These are the extremists, uh, uh, proud boy. Uh, and I'm like, no. No, they're not. They're 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 not. I'm like, you know that that you're putting down your own your own specific race and you're helping them feed a hatred brewing, you know, and uh, that's the you know, I can't say I don't I, you really can't, you can't say it on here. But, you know, who's responsible for that as mm. far as uh, trying to destroy like the white race in general and stuff. And and it, it I don't like to see it personally. So that's what I'm just wondering here in America. There's a lot of different ethnicities and a lot of different things. So it's not like. It would be in China, you know, they can do that in China because there's like one type of, you know, people, one type of, you know, thought and the other people, of course, that they round up and do some other questionable things to. And you get kicked off of YouTube anytime you mention it, apparently. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, it, it just in general, like, uh, is it are you experiencing a lot of like uh, any kind of like racism there or it, the quality of people, the women there, the men in general? Uh, is it like a better quality of people there where you are versus here that you've noticed? I, I definitely see like a degradation of all cultures and peoples yeah. happening. So it's not like I don't think anywhere is escaping it and upholding their historic values and culture and traditions as much as, you know, 60, 70, 80 years ago, um, because we're under such attack from the mainstream media and education system with all these progressive ideologies, um, you know, and I th though, though to answer your question, America seems particularly cultureless or rootless or in, in the sense of most other places have really rich cultures, histories going back thousands of years that America doesn't have that opportunity. And because and because America is a melting pot, it also doesn't have the opportunity to have a single national identity that's really cohesive in the way that somewhere like Thailand does. And so- well, we, we got the I, rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> No comment. That's, that's the new symbol, I suppose. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I had to. I... <laughs> and uh, so, I see in places like Thailand, they they are um, a lot of the people really love their culture and their traditional values. And even if it is slowly being degraded, um, I still see a lot of people really hanging on to it and trying to and and having a real pride in it, which is, I think, difficult for Americans to do because what is there to cling on to? Hot dogs, the constitution that's being decimated. Uh, it's like, what, are, what, <laughs> what is the truly American thing that Americans are supposed to hold on to as being their traditional American values? I would say freedom and uh, you know but it, are we <laughs> are americans really holding on to that thing that made america so special that made americans americans uh the freedom that's what we had over the world that was our thing that's what we had to hold on to and, and claim over everyone else and like i was saying now it's not really the case and that's a shame because it's just going to continue that way the world over. Like if we don't have a bastion of freedom with a document showing a way 
towards freedom, then we're just going to start going, you know, towards the other ways. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying the Constitution of America is like infallible or something. I, 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 it's just a lot better than a lot of other places in the world, the way that their political structure is. I, I do think a lot of places they are hanging on to their cultural values more because they have them. <laughs> and, you know, it's easier to I think America's been easy to uproot because they don't have a long standing culture really to, to hang on. Our, our culture is like Hollywood and the, the music, it's the movie and music industry. And it's exported the world over because it, we, it's uh, high quality, it's um, expensive. The, those entertainments, but they're really just that, they're entertainments. It's not really culture. They call it like the culture creation. Culture can't be created that quickly by on high, you know, from these, these social engineers. Culture happens over hundreds and thousands of years and is upheld by the societies themselves because it's the values that they actually um, agree with. <laughs> and I don't, I mean, they are changing people, but I don't think that the current value system of selfies and likes and twerking and everything they're trying to promote into society is actually what people hold dear and what they're going to continue to hold on to. You know, cause that's what America is becoming now to the world is Cardi B and, and that kind of thing, what are, you know, fake asses <laughs> being shaked and no brains and anywhere in sight, <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, that's, that's what's being exported. That's yeah. what uh, people are seeing more and more so. And like the whole feminist ideology and, and all the movies, like all the heroes now are feminine, they're all female heroes or feminine men. Um, and like any masculinity is toxic and <laughs> it's only reserved for the antagonists now. <laughs> All antagonists are toxic males and the uh, the protagonists are like these little female, like, and they don't have any, um, they don't have to, like uh, the new Star Wars, like she didn't have to do any training or anything. A lot of these female heroes, that, because the feminists that are writing them, they can't write a, they can't have a disempowered female at the beginning of the the story that that you know goes through a normal character arc and be, becomes an empowered female. No, 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 no. All females are automatically empowered, boss babe, <laughs> eleven out of tens, straight from birth. And if you say anything else, you know you're a misogynistic I'm... pig. <laughs> that's that's very the Western. True. That's what Western uh, feminist ideals are exporting the world over. And uh, yeah, Thai women laugh at that. You know. A lot of um, a lot of uh, Eastern women don't buy into this whole feminist narrative of hating men and I don't need no man and I'm an independent woman because I get my own paycheck, which I you know which comes from a boss that's probably a man in an industry that's run by men, selling <laughs> products that were created by men in a building that was built by men. Uh, but I don't need no man, and and of course, like. The, the funny part about that whole feminist narrative is that if you just, if we could go back to traditional, say, 1950s American values and the economy that supported it, where one man could go out and support a woman and a kid and have a car and a house, um, being subservient or submissive or, or just a team player to a man like that, is is so much more preferable to having to go out every single day and work an office job and interact with a bunch of other men and get you know you're these women that have fallen for this feminine feminist narrative that they're able to survive without the influence of men <laughs> so you're just getting your money from other men elsewhere rather than the man you choose and love and stay at home to take care of like used to be the ideal and a lot of women are coming back around to it who have tried to do the boss babe, feminist, independent, don't need no man lifestyle. They realize that, well, you know, I could just fall into my, instead of like being this masculine, because that's what it is, they go into their masculine energy and try to go out into the world and be 
more successful, <laughs> be more manly in a man's world than the men are while complaining about it the whole time versus just being in their feminine energy, staying at home in the kitchen, <laughs> whatever, all those misogynistic phrases. A lot of women don't, especially where I'm from here, what I'm saying, they don't take that as uh, disempowering or misogynistic in any way. They see that as their proper place in life is to support the man they chose rather than working for anonymous men and, and anonymous consumers and, and whatever, or, or only fans of the things you know women are doing nowadays, that you're just getting a bunch of simp men that you don't, it's the exact opposite, basically. If you're if you're an empowered feminist on OnlyFans, making your money from a bunch of simps that you don't even respect, mm -hmm. then you're still not independent. You need a bunch of dis men that you don't respect versus you could be living and loving one man that you chose and do respect and all you and you just have to shut off that narrative of being independent and you can just admit that you're dependent just like me as a man i admit that i'm dependent i couldn't live in this world without everyone else without grocery stores without money without engineers electricians plumbers you know sewage management people trash you know management people like it's, again it's mostly men doing these kind of jobs because women naturally and the way that the patriarchy has designed society is so that women can do the more cushy jobs and they do they go to the lower paying jobs and that's why when you take um you know cents on a dollar the feminists will say women only make 70 cents to the man's dollar which is just not true. That's just a type of study that they do where they don't factor in all variables, which is the fact that men actually work more hours. They work uh, higher paying and more difficult jobs than women usually choose to. Women take maternity leave. Uh, they often aren't as interested in climbing the corporate ladder as a man is, and they, they tend to get more into their family once they have a family, because that's, dare I say it, the natural thing for them to do. Mm -hmm. But the feminists don't want to admit that. They just want to say, 70 cents on the dollar, it's not equal. We're not being treated fairly. Yes, you are. Since mm -hmm. I think it was 1962, it's been illegal to pay women differently um, if they're doing the same job. So there, there is no gender pay gap that the feminists scream about. And all these other things that they complain about, the patriarchy is uh, getting them down. Well, it's mostly men creating this system that has allowed women to you know burn their bras and, <laughs> and do all the other feminist things that they're and to the point that now uh you know the straight white male has become the like dare i say minority or like uh trodden downtrodden class because if you're like a you know a minority female say like the the cultural uh standing now is that i can't say anything like you were saying about people won't drive by you they'll be scared blm will come after them yeah it's a uh, in this supposedly white male patriarchy uh nowadays that demographic is one of the easiest ones to just spit on and and nobody's gonna bat an eye including the white male themselves that's just like oh, okay i mean <laughs> I, yeah. I think people have been indoctrinated into that offended um, tr being triggered and, and like wearing it on their sleeve, like rather than it being um, embarrassing to be an easily triggered and emotional human being, rather than thinking stoicism and being unfazed is a masculine and good trait. No, we're flipping it on its head now. And it's right. it's so cool to flip out and be a Karen and be offended and 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 film it for TikTok and then show <laughs> like can you believe what this what's happening to me and it, and it's going back to that thing I was saying at the beginning it's the externalization of not being your own witness to an nth degree because if you're not being the witness to your own thoughts and emotions then you're going to externalize them and uh, project them onto other people and situations. And then you're gonna like film it, thinking that other people are gonna agree with you and be super outraged just like you are. Right. Meanwhile, 
authentic people who spend time meditating and trying not to be triggered and easily offended by everything. Mm -hmm. Instead, instead of seeing your TikTok and thinking that, wow, I feel so bad for you in that way, <laughs> I just feel bad for how unconscious you are. And the fact that you have, you're so unconscious that it's like you're on autopilot yeah. to that degree of yeah. you, you like, for instance, uh, someone who could catch their autopilot, instead of being so offended, you can, oh, I'm being triggered now. Why? Right. And then you can internalize it and maybe you can develop and you can grow inside by questioning this emotion that's happening inside you rather than just going with it. But these people aren't doing that. They're going with it. And then let's bring everyone else along for the ride. And I'll post it on social media. And then we'll get comments. And they'll get likes. And so so this unconsciousness is just getting externalized and sent out to all these other unconscious people who are feeding this egregore and allowing it to take over their minds. And so what do we need? We need people to do the opposite, which is what I'm saying. Meditate. Stop being so triggered. Stop being offended. And if you are, chill. Yeah. You don't need to film film it and film yourself crying and, and upload everyone else or, or freaking out and causing a public out, outrage or whatever. No, go meditate. Try to deal with yourself. Why did you just get so triggered? Why does this thing offend you so much? How can you transform your life so that when something like that happens again, you can receive it in a more positive way? And, and that you can maybe be a vehicle to change that thing so that it's not that way in the future, maybe, rather than freaking out and thinking that externalizing it is the answer, rather than internalizing it and changing ourselves. So, you know, that's always that spiritual saying where it's um, about, like, if you want to create real change in the world, you have to change yourself. It's like people inherently know that, but are they doing that? Or are they really trying super hard to change the world rather than themselves? And and us as activists, like we were talking about earlier, that's another thing that we can do rather than just trying to, do, you know, billboards and stickers and pamphlets and, and bullhorns and everything. It's like, oh, that's all externalization. Like, that is good if you're ready to do that. Mm -hmm. at a wavelength that other people are ready to hear. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if maybe you're kind of unhinged and unbalanced and you just came to this information and you just want to shout it from the rooftops, but you're not really that good of a public speaker yet, hey, maybe, maybe you'd be better off reading books for a year or mm -hmm. doing meditation for a while or mm -hmm. finding some other kind of personal development that will mm -hmm. eventually you know, transform you internally so that you can externally have the effect that you want rather than just you're the same person you always were you came across some incredible knowledge and now you think you're going to be the perfect vessel for continuing it well have you done the internal work yet <laughs> maybe you're not going to help maybe you're maybe like they say um you can't trust a stupid worse a stupid person's account of what a smart person said Right. If you haven't developed yourself up to the degree yet, even if you know something true and intelligent and important, it, yeah. it might go get funneled through you <laughs> and end up being something that's not so yeah. positive and, and, or influential or helpful, um, which a lot of people find when they try to get out there and externalize their, their knowledge too yeah. soon. They just find out about 9-11. They just find out the earth is flat. They try to tell everybody, and they don't know all the answers and explanations. And then right. somebody who, who has a better hold over certain straw mans and red herrings makes yeah. them look, look bad in a social situation. And then they yeah. get beat, beat down and further unconscious and mm -hmm. triggered and offended rather mm -hmm. than taking that space to build, them, build themselves up first. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'm seeing in society at large is yeah. everyone is externalizing their problems further and further and like getting rewarded for it likes and loves and comments and <laughs> or and in not, not even online but just in person if you know people gossip and complain and you oh 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 you poor thing it's like 
How about telling them to man up? Oh, you can't do that anymore, you know, in this gender neutral society, in this offended generation. Like I said, stoicism is now like a bad thing. Being stoic, that's toxic masculinity. You're holding your emotions in? No, I'm <laughs> I'm dealing with them myself yeah. without externalizing them and bringing everyone else into them and yeah. making it like, a, like I need, you know, everyone else to <laughs> help me with my own internal struggles. It's like, yeah. deal with them yourself. And women yeah. too, you know, it's not a, it's, it isn't a gender thing. Like women can women up too and not have to gossip and tell every single person their problems so that they get a little dopamine hit and then they feel yeah. a little better, I feel better about my problems now because I got a little brain high with some chemicals yeah. from talking about it. Mm. Well, just sit there and think about your problem or do some action that solves the problem by yourself without involving anyone else because nobody wants <clears throat> to hear or be you know have to deal with your problems and mm -hmm. i'm seeing that's a lot of things uh, friendship nowadays seems to be that it's like friends are vic <laughs> are people who don't stand in their power enough so that they can become um unwitting victims of your victim narrative how many friends do you know like this or it's like they your whole friendship is basically just you being a sounding board or an advice column or a, a psychologist for them because they can't internally deal with their own problems. There's like a whole sector of friends that I have had in the past that fall oh, into, tons. That, into that tons. group. And tons, like, man. I, you know, are I these really my friends to... or are these just people using me like a psychologist? Yeah, yeah. Well, I almost had to quit one of my jobs because of that. Like, uh, this guy was inside of his head. He was like, just, what did I do wrong? What, you know, and everything became like a relate, it was a relationship issue. And I'm like, dude, we already went over this, you know, but a lot of people, they run from that. They don't, uh, internalize it properly and, and dwell on it, you know, cause ever since I've been younger, you know, I, um, I kind of always kept a lot of any kind of things in my own, you know, mind and, and learn how to do, especially if you're a musician and stuff. You, you end up trying to make people like you. And at the end of the day, not everybody's going to love your music, you know, and you got to be able to handle it. If somebody says, hey, I know you worked real hard on this, but it's trash and it hurts your feelings a little bit. But, you know, after a while you start, hey, OK, all right, if that's your opinion of it, you know, and it kind of makes you grow. So kind of when I was around maybe uh, 13 or 14, that's when I started getting a lot of that. And uh, right from like 13, 12, 13, that's when I really started handling constructive criticism and processing it properly and not getting emotional because I used to get really upset. I was like, dude, you don't I worked real hard on this. You don't like it. You, you know, and I realized not everybody's going to like everything and I can't make it a personal problem, you know, because there's other people in the world other than myself, you know, <laughs> and, and you can't completely just just, you know shed on everybody else pretty much you know when when you're when you're upset or something it's like you know you got to learn to to hold it and you know i know a lot of people like that they, they they can't do that they just uh they run they either run away from it or like you said project it and throw it on other people and get out you know enraged by it and uh i've had ex-girlfriends like that uh that's done the same thing you know where they just can't handle you know inside their mind for a few minutes, you know, it's real dangerous to them where they're just like, I need to be around people. I need to speak with other people. I need to, you know, and, and they don't have that internal monologue, you know, going on where they understand who they are. You know, they just, they just don't have it. Me, I prefer to kind of sit and, and resonate with things before, you know, before I, uh, you know, do anything. It's, and I think almost because of music and having a background with, with music and stuff, it's kind of gave me that perspective where, uh, you know, I might have a few songs or something that I do and I may not even release them for a month where I just need to sit and, and think and see whether or not they're actually up to my expectations personally, you know, before I start worrying about instantly putting it out there, hoping for gratification and then getting upset that it's not there. You know, I, I wait on it, internalize it a little bit, understand it, think about it. And then I make changes to it in some cases, you know, where, you know, I'm not held to any idea 
And uh, yeah, that's 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 been a big part. But I noticed that's this entire culture here in in I think the whole United States in general. Um, I got a lot of people that I I talk to in different states and stuff. Some of them moved. So I have people on the West Coast that I deal with and they're pretty much running into the same thing. You know, a lot of emotionally driven individuals. And, uh, you know, I, I think for whatever is coming up here for the future, people are going to have to get that under control really quickly if they want to. You know, I think a lot of people got lucky. You know, and I'm not saying that in a good sense. A lot of, a lot <laughs> they of people got have lucky first that they're world. Still, I think a lot of people have first world problems yeah. and coming soon to your doorstep are third world problems. Yeah. And you're going to and if you if your first world problems are triggering you and tripping you out, right. just wait until these real problems come to your doorstep is the, that's right. it. No. And um yeah, they're going to learn real fast if they don't beforehand. Yeah, no, no internet, you know, imagine that. <laughs> no, no, no electricity. Internet, no electricity, <laughs> they're done. They're done. Yeah. I don't even want to be in this whole country if something like that goes down but that is a you know I, i've noticed that starvation and isolation is one of these controllers main you know probably biggest killing tool that they are that they probably like the most as well you know because any amount of suffering that they can put on to people i feel that's what they're in in it for is for the suffering because there's a lot of ways to do things you know, whether it's it's war, whether it's but that's not really the biggest thing. The biggest thing they love is famine and 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 starvation and, and that type of stuff and and brutalizing, you know, and a lot of people here in America, I don't think that they're really ready for that kind of stuff because they got too many pockets of resistance and, you know, left wing, right wing, this, that. And I'm like, none of that's going to matter at the end of the day it might matter a little bit at food, first but yeah, food and water are going to matter yeah. uh, when it comes down to it for sure cuz the all of the biggest genocides in history don't come from bullets they come from lack of food and water yeah and so and so when you want to talk about preparation or things that we can do farming your own food and dr digging your own wells or having your own ponds Yep. huge and and that of course means having your own land as well yeah. so you know we need land and we need to work the land that is the biggest thing that most people can do in their daily lives um right. because it has nothing to do with the political or the conspiracies or anything right. and it's just you setting up a good life for yourself which everybody yeah. should be doing and we yeah. can as long as we recognize that uh, a good life means owning your own land, your own house, growing your own food, and having your own water, and ideally your own electricity too. So we're talking solar or other means of electricity so that in no way are you, it's called off grid, no way are you responsible for being on the government grid and you can survive food, water, shelter uh, there on your own land. Um, how many people can could survive like that right now. I'm dead, you know? I don't even have the first prerequisite, but that's, I'm working towards it, but I mean, I'm, you know, it's difficult <laughs> in the modern oh, no. econo economy to be able to afford even subsistence living. As a 40 year old man, I still haven't been able to accrue enough wealth to buy my own land, house, and start, the, you know, a farm. And I'm working on it. That's what I'm, will hopefully get towards. and. Ideally, everyone else that's looking for solutions is either already doing that or working towards that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's one thing we can we can do for sure, rather than renting from high rise apartments in um, city big cities. We don't want to live vertically up right. in places that we're being s smushed into. Yeah. We want to spread out and live on the earth, grounded and and again, not renting, we want to own that, that land and we want to believe in that ownership in the sense that even if they're taxing it and we, you know, at least it's, you know, it's your, you bought it rather than renting it. And then some other person or entity can come up, come in. And when the entity does come in and they say, we have eminent domain over your land, we'll stand in your belief that it's your land and not theirs. And if we all did that, then this this entity called government that keeps trying to usurp our lands will be unable to 
But yeah. the problem is again this this need for us to have unity in our decentralization. It's like we we all have to be one in our standing apart together, and it's so difficult. Yeah. And I think you hit the nail on the head that it's the media that's doing this, and it's the media that could take it back. Because as I said, the problem is having one group or one centralized thing that we all fall under, and that's our unity. No, we don't want that. What we want is a unity of ideas or, or a unity of acknowledgement of truth. But that can't happen until we actually have a mainstream media worldwide that's feeding enough truth that we can get on that base level. Now the mainstream media is dividing everybody so that the, we don't have any common ground whatsoever to have like first principles that everybody can agree on that we can stand with. That's what I think things like voluntarism are trying to do because they have really simple first principles like um, respect for property rights and uh, voluntary interactions only with other people and the government, which is morally just versus statism, what we have now where you are com compulsorily forced into your many, many, many interactions with the government. Mm -hmm. And if you try to maintain your freedom, mm -hmm. you'll find out just how much freedom you actually have because they have a monopoly of force and violence and a uh, law system and cages to put you in and, and ways to take your earnings away from you or, or close your bank account, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 No, you're, you're a hundred percent right on that. I, that's, that's kind of what I've been doing. I've been trying to uh, just, you know, own as much as I can because the rent really, you know, I started looking into it even deeper and I found that you're really paying the same amount as if you own it to the, to rent it at the end of the day, it's not cheaper at all. And, uh, you know, I've actually paid less for uh, uh, my own house than I have actually when I was uh, living in an apartment and stuff. But, you know, that is, like you said, what they're trying to do. They're trying to put you in these these vertical, you know, stations where and the rent is through the roof. Um, even even with everything going up in price the way it is now, everything is like balanced. I'm looking at the minimum wage and as it goes up higher here in America, 17, 18 dollars an hour. If you want a one bedroom just on that type of salary, say you're full time and you're $18 an hour, a one bedroom around uh, in my area and my area is lower because I'm not in the city, but it's actually close to almost $2,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude, you know, I guess you'll be drinking water for the whole month because you're not going to be able to afford any food or, or anything else. You know, that's if you're working a full time job, you know, with, the, you know, which is double the minimum wage from when I had graduated. Uh, you know, and uh, and I was in college and stuff. It was double back then. It was like seven, seven dollars and everything was like twelve, thirteen hundred. Then as you went up to seventeen dollars now, you're like, you know, two thousand minimum for one bedroom. I'm like, you're never going to own that. And it's just as much or more than, you know. But my, my issue was when a lot of that stuff was happening, that's when I really stepped up my game with uh, just preparing for not having to deal with any government type of entity at all. I don't, I'm not going to stand in their bread lines. I'm not going to uh, do what they tell me to do to go into their stores and buy their stuff. Any store that had me wearing masks. I'm like, I'm not going in there. I, it's just, it's not, it's not happening. So I changed my diet up. I, I don't do any, you know, I try not to have any kind of toxins if possible um, from all this fast food. I won't even go near a fast food restaurant. They're just, that's not even, and drinking tons of water, you know, I take black seed oil and other things and, and just lowering the inflammation. I haven't had any kind of detox at all. And I haven't felt the need to, the most I've had in the last six years has been a moderately sore throat for two or three days. And then pretty much if you, you know, if I'm drinking enough water, it goes away, you know what I mean? And, uh, other people I'm counting during the, the whole shutdown and they're all coughing and hacking and just sick. And I'm like, you guys, it's your body telling you that it's trying to expel toxins. You know, it's like if you if you just stop eating, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the first thing. Stop eating for a while and fast and get rid of some of the toxins in your body. You know, you'll be healthier 
you know, and uh, there was one guy that that I sat next to. He um he 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 really got me doing a lot of fasting with him, uh, where he just didn't. It was intermittent fasting, so it wasn't exactly like what you do. Um, I, I, do I haven't done a, I do intermittent do you, you fasting do as well as long term. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So we were waiting until a certain time. Uh, we would stop eating anything after like six, and we wouldn't eat anything until lunch the next day. And we would drink tons and tons of water and, uh, with, you know, had a lot of like vegetables and stuff. He ate like uh, avocado every day. And, uh, you know, he was like 50, 51, looked like he was in his thirties. You know what I mean? Just excellent shape, you know? And, uh, you know, like just, he wasn't sick the whole time he was working with me and stuff, you know, <laughs> and, uh, he, he, he would pretty much anytime the, the, we had one guy in our work that was just hilarious, like, like just scared of everything. It was mass hysteria. And every time he got close to that guy, he would, he would grab his mask and lift it up on his face and, and turn like this away from him. And he was doing that to make the guy uncomfortable because the guy was so Oh, you need to put on your mask. You need to stand six feet. Stay. So every time he got too close to him, he would go, oh, let me, let me move. Let me move back some, you know, cover up his face and stuff. So we'd have a, a laugh, you know, on, on the inside joke of it. But yeah, I've, I've been watching like a lot of your, a lot of your stuff on, you know, as far as like changing your diet and, and just getting rid of all the toxins from meat and, and actually like fasting and stuff. So I haven't done the full fast. I do want to, I've been trying to do a little bit of gaining, but it's hard for me to gain because I don't eat a lot, like tons of, uh, I don't eat, you know, a lot of stuff with, uh, no, I'm not going to say protein. I do eat a decent amount of protein, but not necessarily for meat. You know what I mean? So I'm, I don't really gain much anymore. And I was taking this medication for a long period of time and it was kind of messing with my, uh, my mood you know, and it's, I still feel it now, even, even today where, uh, I was on it for about like a year and it permanent, it felt, felt like it permanently altered my body's chemistry a little bit. Mm. So one day I was like, I'm not taking this medicine anymore. I'm like, I'm mm. done. And, uh, I told, I called my doctor. I was like, I'm done with this medicine. He's like, all right, well, you might want to slow down on it and take less dosage. I was like, no, no, I'm done. I'm throwing it away. I'm not taking less. I'm not tapering. I'm done. So I ended up just pretty much just letting it go completely. I was sick for like uh, maybe three or four days with some kind of uh, weird withdrawal from it. And mm -hmm. uh, I drank tons of water and stuff. And and uh, like I said, anything I do mentally, I can do it. You know, if I decide mm -hmm. I don't want to do something, I just I just quit. Like uh, I used to smoke cigarettes for a short period of time. And mm -hmm. instantly I would just throw it away because there wasn't an addiction over my mind. I had more right. control over myself. So if I just wanted to smoke, I would smoke. If I didn't, I would just toss it, you know, yep. and never crave it ever again. So I had, uh, I did vape for a short period, but right around 2019, when they started shutting everything down and people, you know, going to the hospital and stuff, I was like, I'm not, I'm going to keep my lungs as clear as I possibly can. So I just threw all that away and I haven't smoked anything since uh, maybe July of 2019. And uh, that was like vape a little bit, you know, on top of that, it wasn't even cigarettes or anything, but uh, all of it's equally as bad. If you ask me, it's rough on your lungs, but I've only probably collectively smoked for a couple years. And uh, but so moderately, I've kept myself as healthy as possible. But I think that was more peer pressure from other people smoking constantly. And it's like, oh, yeah, give me a pack of cigarettes. But I don't do any of that anymore. I'm like, dude, you know, you, all you have on this earth is your health. and And as long as you're in good health, you still have some power over what happens to you. But once you get sick, you're now in the care of other people, you know, and, and uh, you're at their mercy. And seeing yeah, 2020. It's the, yeah, it's the foundation of happiness, too. Like if you're yeah. sick, it's almost impossible to be happy. Yeah. Uh, you know, depending how sick you are and how long term the, the or chronic it is, it can yeah. really take down your quality of life to the point that a lot of people, you know, want to end themselves uh, based on yeah. that level of yeah. suffering. So to yeah. try to alleviate that kind of suffering before it even happens, we can be proactive about looking after our health. Uh, I smoked cigarettes for years as well. And then I started doing daily pranayama deep breathing practice. <laughs> and then I was smoking cigarettes after. And within a few days or weeks of, of truly getting serious about, I'm going to do this for life, I'm going to be 
a yogi and I'm going to do pranayama practice every day. And it just, I quit smoking instantly after that. Like, yeah. in other words, I, I did it for a few days. I mm -hmm. recognize that this is ridiculous. I'm sitting right. there in a lotus pose, doing deep breathing exercises, tripping out. Uh, um, you know, I was d doing for an hour, hour and a half. It was, you know, wonderful feelings. You're basically tripping out over your own body's chemicals from getting full oxygen oxygenation. Yeah. And then at night, I'd smoke a cigarette like I was used to doing, and I was like, what am I doing? And then the next day, I could feel it. And the more cigarettes I smoked, the more I could feel it in the pranayama practice. And I was like, well, this, is, this is dumb. I'm like, it's like uh, trying to bandage up one arm while stabbing myself in the other arm. Yeah. And so just that um, basically people that say that like it's difficult to, to quit cigarettes, they just mm -hmm. haven't gotten to the point where they truly want to quit is what it mm -hmm. is. And for me, during that time when I, because I truly wanted to be more healthy and I truly wanted to go far okay. with yoga as a discipline mm -hmm. and, and deep breathing and everything. And, and it feels great when you can truly f fully expand your lungs when you've done deep breathing practice to the point that I have, like I have an expanded rib cage even. And you, you're getting real energy versus like this like the yeah. tobacco. It is like, it's like a, an energy that you get that... Um, it's um, it's not like oxygen, you know, the, yeah. what it, what it, all the crap that's in there. It might right. help you feel good when you're stressed for a few minutes, but as a regular activity, um, you'd be much better off learning to do deep breathing every time you're stressed, and you're gonna feel way better than the cigarette. Mm -hmm. The cigarette is like a, a facsimile of deep breathing that actually has the exact opposite effect. Because it's like mm -hmm. people people that are stressed and they smoke a cigarette or they go out and they complain in their smoking circles with their smoking buddies. What you really want is that. But instead, you're doing this mouth breathing, right. chemicals and smoke. Maybe, maybe you're letting it out through your nose. So you did the exact opposite of what you should be doing, which is right. nose breathing, oxygen, and then letting that out through your mouth. Um, and I was also going to say with the fasting, um, you mentioned that you haven't long term fasted yet, but you have done intermittent fasting. I would recommend that um, if you go from never fasting before and then you try to do seven days, 14, 21, whatever, uh, it's a real shock to the system. It's yeah. difficult. It's there's it, there's a spiritual aspect to it as well. And just jumping yourself headlong into a super long fast when you haven't even tried a short one yet, um, you might throw both chemically and mentally some things off kilter and physically um, because your body's not used to going into that starvation mode and, and whatnot, especially if you've never done intermittent fasting. So it is a healing modality, but it's also a shock to the system. And so if you're not used to that healing modality, then mm -hmm taking it to the nth degree, like a lot of people do when they first come upon it and they see some some YouTube video or something, and they're like, oh, I want to do that 28-day water fast. Let's go. It's like they're going from a standard American diet to a 28-day water fast. It's like, <laughs> whoa, chill. Yeah. Your, your body, you don't need to just like, <laughs> like go right. crazy. Like, let's start by removing McDonald's. You know, Next week, right. we'll remove coffee. Next week we'll try to cut down on beef and chicken, and then, you know, and slowly. It's similar to like really obese people going to the gym and like putting undue stress on their knees and running laps and stuff. It's like, yeah. hold on, yeah. Eighty percent of weight loss is what you're putting in your mouth. Don't yeah. worry about that extra twenty percent when you're completely obese, thinking that causing irreparable knee damage <laughs> from running is what you need right now. What you need is a vegan diet. You need to cut your calories. You know, there's a bunch of other things that obese people need to do rather than hitting the gym or doing laps and stuff. But they'll, again, they don't know these things. Um, and so they do the traditionally recommended thing, which is, oh, I got to get myself to the gym. Or, or I got to eat a keto diet because they always promote the opposite of what we really need. So they promote high fat, low carb diets. They call it Atkins. They call it keto, keto, paleo, primal. They give it new names 
they update the thing uh, regularly. Um, low carb, they just call it low carb, but what is a low carb diet but a high fat diet? If, if things that are low in carbs are high in fat. So, but the optimal food for humans is fruit. Yeah. And almost all fruits are high carb. And we are high carb beings. Mm -hmm. And the propaganda is trying to get us to think that we want to have a high fat diet. Mm -hmm. and, and even in vegan land, like they're, they're trying to promote keto vegan, like that's, that's the healthy option. And so you know, I've, I've, I've experimented on this for a long time and I've researched the subject for a long time. And yeah. people who don't know me from this subject, they think that like Eric knows everything about all these other subjects, but when it comes to health, oh, Eric doesn't do his research <laughs> and he doesn't know anything. It's like, hey guys, <laughs> I figured out all that other stuff and you think I'm, the only thing I'm wrong about is is how I eat. <laughs> like, right. okay, well, right. talk to me when I'm, when I'm 50, when I'm 60, right. when I'm 70, you know. I uh -huh. think over time, people are slowly coming around to the fact that maybe Eric does know a few things about health because he, he's, he seems to be looking good, he seems to be doing fine, and he's doing the exact opposite of what all the other gurus are saying. That I should right. be eating high fat, and I should be doing a carnivore diet. I should be yeah. eating exclusively meat, and dairy yeah. is good for you, Eric. And why would you eat like a rabbit, not plant? <laughs> it's like there's 70,000 edible plant foods on Earth, yet yeah. most people stick to the same four or five animals, and they think that's the level of variety that the human body yeah. requires. <clears throat> The human body, uh, all nutrients comes from plants, including the ones that we get secondhand from the animals. And people think that them getting animal protein or this and that nutrient from animals needs mm -hmm. to happen that way. A, they either get it from plants and we can get it directly from plants themselves, or mm -hmm. B, we can create it ourselves and we don't need to eat it exogenously to create it, especially mm -hmm. if we're running at an optimal um, you know, if our system's running optimally, which is another thing I find is I'm highly sensitive to bad food, bad environments. Uh, you know, I, if I just eat something that has a little bit too much oil, I'll throw up. Yeah. You know, the average person eats way more oil <laughs> than, than I do. Yeah. But they would, they might see that reaction that, oh, is Eric getting sick? No, I didn't get sick. My body is so sensitive. I mm -hmm. just, I allowed myself to eat something that is of a lower par than I would usually eat. This just happened last week. I ate some uh, Indian curry and it clearly had way too much um, uh -huh. uh, oil in it. And I woke up two in the morning and boom, I just threw up the curry. Yeah. And yeah. it was clear that it was, it, all this it, it was potatoes and cauliflower. <laughs> like, I'm not throwing up potatoes and cauliflower. I'm throwing up the clearly, there was a shitload of oil in it and I noticed it and didn't have my girlfriend remove the oil before um, reheating it. And so it just soaked all into the, the potatoes and I just ate the whole thing and, and also went to bed shortly after it, which is another no-no. You should be awake for several hours right. rather than laying horizontally and letting that oil just be undigestible in my system. So it woke me up yeah. a couple hours later to throw it out and then I felt fine, went back to sleep. Mm -hmm. I don't consider that me being sick. I didn't get sick. My body is of such a high level that yeah. it forced the negative intruder out so that yeah. my body doesn't have to go down to a lower level, which is what would happen with the normal person who already eats that much oil all the time and crap all yeah. the time anyway. Their body is able to process it, and you, yeah. they might think that that's, that's what health means. They also People that eat meat a lot, for instance, their body's full of parasites. All meat eaters right. are full of parasites, and you need to be to be able to fully digest the meat that you eat because yeah. our bodies don't do it. <laughs> the, right. They need the parasites to do it. And even more gross is a large percentage of your excrement isn't even yours. It's the excrement of parasites that are living rent-free in your bowels and they help you digest your food. And you actually need them if you have that diet. And if you slowly start getting rid of that diet, the parasites will leave because they don't feed on the you know bitter vegetables for example if you right. do if you do a water fast and then you cleanse with certain detox elements the parasites need to find a new home they'll be starved out of you and then you don't put new ones in because you're no longer eating 
the things that they thrive on or the things that they're they grow in um so absolutely uh people oh so fasting my recommendation was to maybe start with a, a one day if you've never have you ever gone a day without eating yeah i have i have yeah full day in, yeah. intentionally was it intentional yeah okay, yeah good. yeah this mm-hmm. is different if it wasn't intentional um mm-hmm. It's, it's like a, it was a real mental component to fasting, like I said, like a spiritual thing. You have all this extra time and you, because you're not thinking about food, you're not making food, you're not eating food, you're not digesting food. Right. And then you're not, you don't have extra sleep because you're tired from the food, which you'll find when you fast for a long time, you'll sleep less. Um, you, you'll have more energy. It'll, it'll go up and down because you don't have that food spike of energy that you're used to, but you'll still have an incredible amount of energy every single day and after a few days you'll stop being hungry and you'll be like what is this and so you have this really fresh kind of energy that's clearly not coming from food anymore and it's it's coming straight from you and either your you know fat stores and uh and um the air and you know things like that uh versus you know your standard american diet and once you do fast, you have to be careful about reintroducing. Like if you fast, the, the longer you fast, and then you reintroduce food as a hamburger or a, a, a whole large pizza, you can die. Yeah. It's your all your internal organs they they shrink and they you know all the all the digestive organs just like everyone knows your stomach shrinks when you don't eat for a while. It's the same with literally all of your digestive organs. They de-emphasize themselves and they they shrink and they go into a cleansing mode actually which is good for them they can't do it if they're constantly having stuff being pumped through them all the time but then they have like this automatic default mode where when you stop eating and they don't have to digest and create new bile and juices and everything to to do what they usually do they do other other processes and so they go into a like your liver and your gall i don't know the whole uh, technical terms for for everything but as a easy way to think of it basically they they have like a uh, a flush system that happens that they can't do if they're always working just like any any machine if you're constantly using the machine you can't clean it you can't flush the system out because you're using it and so our bodies are no different and the way that we can trigger the flush mechanism is to stop using them, <laughs> stop using our bodies. And the, the thing we use them the most for is this. We're constantly putting right. shit in there all the time. Uh-huh. Um, so you stop that for a while, and then, you, um, and then on top of that, like I said, you can cl- cleanse with water. So dry fasting is dangerous, which is when you stop um, putting anything in your body, including water, right. and you can die from that pretty pretty quickly. And Again, like I said, you don't want to shock your system. You want to slowly adapt your system to needing less food and getting better energy from better places. So you'll have better food and you do your pranayama and yoga practice and you do a little exercise and so that you're you work your way into a higher vibration of energy and you're needing less food and you're still maintaining the same weight as well. This is another thing, but you have to ease yourself into that. If you just try to go 100% high raw, high carb, vegan overnight after a long term fast from eating 30 years of a standard diet, American diet or something like that's not um, recommended. I don't recommend anyone try to do the cold turkey vegan <laughs> or fasting yeah. method. I think both things, but fasting and um, healthy eating should be eased into. You don't want to shock your system with all these healthy habits. <laughs> if your system is really used to a bunch of, you know, inherent, uh, objectively unhealthy things, yeah. shocking it with objectively healthy things, um, it, it's, it's better than continuing on with your unhealthy habits. But it's in some ways it's unsustainable because a lot of people have cravings or they start to fall back or literal chemical cravings. So like. Maybe you, your will, you think, I can do this, I really want to, but internally you have like chemical stuff, dependencies going on that you don't know about that are, you know, for instance, to um, certain foods have chemicals in them that are similar to heroin and, and other drugs. And people don't realize that these are in foods that they've been eating every single day. And then when they stop eating them, 
you're going to go through the same kind of withdrawal symptoms that a drug user goes through. And that yeah. will, that iron will that you think you have or that you had at the beginning is going to start to corrode under the weight of all of this, you know, mental and yeah. emotional um, stuff that's going to come up when you start fasting and having all this yeah. free free time to do nothing but think about how hungry you are and, uh, <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, so um, easing into it is a good idea. Yeah, if you've done a day fast, next you can do two days or three days and, and go into that way um, rather than jumping all in or in the same with vegan like if people have been eating meat every single day for the rest for their whole life and then they try to st stop eating it instantly you're gonna have cravings and, and and you're gonna have social situations and all these things that you didn't think of ahead of time that you thought it would be easy to just cut it out and you know in the long term coming from <laughs> someone who's who's done both basically because i've tried to you know say jump ahead of my health journey and then mm -hmm. go back a couple steps and then realize like, oh, I, maybe I, I miscalculated the, my ability to maintain that level. I look at it like a mountain health. Mm -hmm. And like, I know what the, the peak is. The peak is basically you eat nothing but fruit because it's in, in a little bit of vegetables, mm -hmm. all raw. There's no reason to cook anything. There's no reason to eat grains. There's no reason to eat animals. There's no reason to eat dairy. So all these things are subpar foods. The, the optimal foods for humans are raw fruits and vegetables, nuts and mm -hmm. seeds, sprouts, that's it. Mm -hmm. And I know that, and I've, I've lived that way for periods of time, and, I, and boy, do I have a lot of energy, <laughs> and it mm -hmm. almost is too much energy, one. It gets boring as far as taste is concerned because there's not much variety. Three, it, it doesn't digest quite as easily as cooked food. Uh, four, the energy is quicker expelled than cooked food which you can you can eat one meal of cooked food and it'll last longer than a meal of fruit um so there's there's reasons why say living at the top of the health mountain isn't for me for instance i, I stay at clear, near the summit knowing what the peak is never letting myself fall down too far right. because I, I haven't eaten uh a bit of meat in 15 years, I'll never go back on certain things, but certain things, you know, like maybe four years ago, I had a drink of alcohol at a party or something, you know, but it, that was four years. Like, so this, I have my own way of being where I, I like, I don't like black and white, right. you know, like telling myself that I'll never do this thing again. Like even meat, I, I, I think if, um, if I was in an emergency situation where there's literally no food whatsoever and I'm starving or if I was put long term in a prison and they wouldn't give me adequate vegetarian food I think maybe in those circumstances I might you know eat meat I'd have to be put in the circumstance and then decide from there but my point is that I don't like setting up black and white things for myself like that and then mm -hmm. acting like I can never have a gray area again I think people are better suited knowing what what's white, what's black, seeing themselves as a certain shade of gray in the middle and trying to stay towards the top of that mountain, whatever it be, whether it's health or anything else. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people try so hard to get to 100% of whatever, um, you know, you're going to be the best there is or it's not worth doing at all or I got to do it 100% or I'm not going to do it at all. It's like, oh man, 99, 98, 95% is excellent. That's still an A. Yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah. need an A+. Plus. <laughs> yeah, because you, you can kind of set yourself up to fall uh, sometimes without the, the, the gray area, you know, yeah, and, and back to black rather than yeah. falling a couple of shades of gray. Yeah, you know, fall yeah. right back all, to the all bottom the of the pyramid. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I, what I did. I, I was working, I was moving slowly with it. And uh, but yeah, and, and also the people around you, too, because I was eating a lot of uh, like raw vegetables. I still do. And I actually like the taste of it in general. and. A lot of people, some of my family and stuff, they hate it. So whenever I'm actually cooking for them, I like the raw raw vegetables. And they're just like, These, this needs to be cooked, boiled, uh, baked, sauteed, <laughs> sauce. I'm like, no, man, I, I don't, I can't eat that with that. Because I actually do get sick now myself. So if I, uh, like, if I actually go to a uh, fast food restaurant or something, 
I will actually get sick if I eat that. So I can no longer eat that because I really I started cutting a lot, almost like 98 percent, I would put it, of any kind of uh, oil out of my diet. And uh, I just looked and noticed everything has oil in it. Everything It's like, you know, it's an inflammatory is horrible. And every chip has it in it. Every everything in plastic has it has it. And you can't find anything that doesn't have canola or all this other, you know, um, man made created oil, you know, and high, Mm -hmm. high temperature back to low temperature, back to high temperature crap. And and, uh, I can't I actually can't eat it. I thought I had to actually go to. uh, to the hospital years ago because I ended up going out with a guy and um, he ended up like buying me some dinner, one of my old friends. And I ate, I ate it and uh, it was, it, I don't know. I, my heart started beating real fast. I started getting really, really sick. And I almost had like, it was like a panic attack thing where I was really like sick, nauseous, dizzy. I couldn't walk or anything. And uh, you know, I, so I got really sick. He was like, man, do I need to call the, ambulance to come pick you up right now i'm like dude I, i'm i'm really sick i'm not eating this crap anymore and that's just from switching your diet slowly over the years that your body's not used to you know because there's a lot of like you said a lot of toxins there's like a pharmacy in the water supply in in the food and you do get you know withdrawal symptoms and get sick from it you know because you're not noticing what's going on but that's really what what's really happening to a lot of people i think the adhd and and all that stuff. So I did watch a lot of your videos on on some of that. It seems like a really heated topic. I don't know why people are so necessarily so, right? <laughs> yeah. Like people get yeah, so they, heated over what you put in your mouth. <laughs> they are. They're so angry. It's like when you tell them, you're like, no, 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 just like fruits, vegetable. They're like, oh, what what the hell did he say? Did he say? I That's know not he healthy. Say that. I liked him up until then. You know, raw <laughs> animal bits is what's healthy nowadays. <laughs> like everyone used to know that fruits and vegetables were healthy and then when someone comes along and says hey if you just eat fruits and vegetables you're even healthier and they're like what that's absurd yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i seen people because I, uh, I didn't know you're, you're like all over the place so i kind of see you in some real obscure areas sometimes across the networks i'm at and uh, some people are just like yeah i'm done I'm done eating vegetables and stuff and I'm going back to meat. You coming in there. It's like, hey, do you I, I got a whole bunch of doctors that show a whole bunch of studies from this, that. You show your links to everything. You're just like, look, you're, Are you you're the flat you know. earth guy. <laughs> right, right. All of a sudden there's like, oh, he, he used to be cool. I'm, I don't no, no, no. He's messing with my food now. He's messing yeah. he messed with my earth. And now he's messing. <laughs> <with me. laughs> I'm not gonna tolerate him messing with my food. We gotta do something about that. <laughs> But yeah, it is. Stay it in is your lane. Game. Stay in your lane, Eric. <laughs> right, 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 right. The road is our lane, as far as I'm concerned. You know, anywhere. I was, I was vegan before I was a flat earther. <laughs> uh-huh. I was I was a vegan long before I was a flat earther. Most of them, right. they, they don't know that. <laughs> right, right. No, your your knowledge in it is extensive, and I I got I got to be honest. I was having a lot of. Uh, I, you offered me two two different things. One personally. But uh, you actually helped me with um, my sinuses. But I had a little issue with acid reflux and a lot of things. And it's because I was just, it's too acidic. Everything was just too acidic. And and my diet, it it wasn't horrible. So, you know, like I've always been my size now, ever since, you know, forever. So I've never, ever been over or anything like that. I have been under one time from medication, but. Um, I was I was watching a few of your videos and when I switched up my 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 uh, food that that I'm eating and everything my diet and I started eating more vegetables more uh, a lot more water I wasn't acidic anymore and I didn't have all I mean it was almost overnight I I thought something was wrong with me <laughs> when it first happened I was like dude isn't this where I'm supposed to take some yeah. nasty antacids or something and 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 fix this and it just went away. You know, and I looked at the it's medicine the that this stupid doctor gave me and it said uh, it, it's it's this antacid thing. And it said one of the side effects is stomach cancer. Mm. I'm like, no, no. no I'm, so, you know, I instantly stopped taking that crap after I had read that. I'm like, this is this is stupid because I it was messing with me. My heart was kind of, you know, and I was like, I can't take this medication. So I'm really sensitive to medicine also. So I don't take any medicine 
And uh, the other thing you had helped me with, I think you had seen one of my streams. So I wanted to thank you for that too, um, for the breathing exercises that, that right. you helped that. me with. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> because uh, that's, I don't know why it started happening to me. I don't think I was in the best living situations and my uh, sinuses were inflamed and they wouldn't go away. So I went to uh, 10 different specialists and none of them could, some of them gave me the same thing. One of them actually asked me, well, what do you want to do? I'm like, dude, I didn't pay you three hundred dollars for you to ask me. I'm like, you're the you're the doctor, not even doctor, you're a specialist. And uh, so I got mad with him really quick because he was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help you. I'm like, why is this inflamed and why won't it go away? So I started actually doing some uh, some more um, like neti pot uh, type of things and uh, just flushing my sinuses out and then doing some of your breathing exercises every day. And I'm not having like it was so bad that i couldn't sleep i mean it was you know pretty much a post nasal drip 24 7 so you know i was slowly losing my sanity altogether i mean i people ask me to go do things i'm like no i don't want to talk to anybody i don't want to see anything i don't care about what you got going on you know it's your birthday good 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 job you know get out of my face and uh, <laughs> You know, because it, it works on your attitude. Like you said, it's part of being happiness, you know, it, finding the, the true happiness of life and being healthy is it's it's hand in hand with, you know, being content and feeling good. And when you feel bad every day, you don't really feel like doing anything. And that was me for years. I was like, you know, and it hit an all time low to the point where I was having trouble with relationships and everything. And I was like, I, you know, and I'm, I'm kind of recovering from all of that and uh you know with doing some of your exercises and stuff so that's actually helped me out a lot you know normally if i was on like a meeting with you right now and i didn't do any of that you'd have to see me get up and go outside and start spitting out a whole bunch of mucus and everything just every two seconds it wouldn't turn mm -hmm. off and uh if i took claritin or any kind of over-the-counter nonsense um it would get worse and it would actually make it run faster all from everywhere. And I'm like, there's no cure for it. And uh, mm. just doing that, you know, every day and, and bre different breathing exercises and stuff. And I looked over a, a few, a few of your, uh, your, your informational videos on that stuff. And it, it helps, you know, it helped me with stress altogether. Cause I was, like I said, doing what I was doing, I, I was kind of really burning at both ends. So it, uh, you know, it really, it really helped me out a lot, man.